like. Uh, we like. Seems good. Veldak, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And thank you for the for the greeting. All right, let's get stone. Um, I need to copy paste. Well, I could probably figure it out, but uh, I would rather copy something I've done somewhere else here. Um, exactly what we're doing that's changed since we made this blueprint. Rix, good to see you again. Sigma Bean, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Get them raus, raus, indeed. Um, all right, we need... Let's see. Uh, this is outpost number, what? Six or seven or something? Um... The most recent one is down the bottom, conveniently enough. Uh, let's see. I need to check the signal timing for all of these different outposts. So we've got... Uh, 15. Whoops. This one is 20. 25. What happened to 5 and 10? This one's 30. I think these two are 5 and 10. Yes. Yes, these were the first two that we made, actually. 10. Alright, so it's 5, 10. Uh, this one's 30. I think 30 was the most recent, right? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So this will be 35. When time is equals 35 send all the signals through on that channel why do i have a bot chasing me with 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 used up life support um how, how about i think we have logi bots here so i don't want to put stuff in my trash lots right now Dilka, morbid dragon d hose good to see you again welcome welcome hope you're doing well and that was a construction bot. Midden, good to see you again also. Starcode, welcome in. I was watching a Czech guy play SEK2 while I was waiting for the stream. Czech names of all items and tech is cringy to me. I'm used to English terms. Cringy. Awesome. Are you winning, son? Not, not doing too badly, I think. All right. Um... I have a bunch of crap in my inventory that is not helping right now. Uh, let me put some of this back where it belongs. And... Uh, I don't know what else, honestly. Should only need one inventory space empty, right, for the moment. Now then... These are already set correctly. I need to check which wires these use. Green goes to core fragment type less than 10k. Red goes to planet orbit equals our local address. All right. Wait, wait, wait. Make sure we update this first. Uh, stone. And this is green wire. And planet orbit 173. We start a timer if the destination on the memory cell back home is equal to... Oh, sorry, is not equal to this location. That should be it. And then I can't remember... Uh, I guess green wire to here? Probably. I mean, I, I can see that that will work. What, is that how I did it elsewhere? Red wire. I guess it doesn't matter. Does anything else read from the red wire up here? If anything greater than something something. Yeah, no, this is just outputting time. Hmm. There's nothing reading the red wire 
that depends on a time signal. It should be okay. Either way. Lucky timing two. Um playing a melee hardcore Terraria run. Just done just got done fighting Duke. Wow. Nicely done. What's uh what difficulty level? And what weapon uh how early did you go for Duke with what weapon? So I think this outpost is actually finished now. Um, we might even have a ship on its way here already. Let's see. Did we finish this? We needed like two lamps. Oh, and I have to drop off some bots here to get it started. Hmm. I could just temporarily do a little... Do a little space belt across here. And there's no logi bots in here actually. Uh that actually makes it way harder to do this part remotely. How about a little scaffolding. Scaffolding, and then that goes here. I think the construction train still carries a little bit of scaffolding. Nope. We could arrange it, I think. Uh, it's probably easier if this guy just does a drive-by as well. Okay. Park here indefinitely, and park here indefinitely. I almost lost my run going too far and summoning Dungeon Guardian. Oh no. Lava and teleport for phase one. Terror blade for phase two. Lava and teleport. Oh, so cheese. Okay. I mean, you are doing hardcore. That's... I'm not blaming you for cheese. Absolutely not. Evil Plum, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, so now we can grab a little Logi Bot. Just one is actually all we need to get this started. Oh, that's a lot of Logi Bots. And then decon this. Decon that. And decon that. Oh. Go back and get reset. This guy should only have to have a little bit of scaffolding added in. That should be fine. And we now have logi bots. I, I could have done a system that, like, gets the logi bots placed in here automatically every time but like we're only gonna have to do this at most like 17 times in the entire playthrough uh and that's pretending that we're ever gonna bother with crude oil core fragments which we're not because yesterday we did the math and concluded that we're better off getting coal core fragments if all even if all we wanted was oil um and doing coal liquefaction Used a weapon that shouldn't be used for him. Took forever, indeed. To be fair, I didn't cheese phase two. Fair enough. Oh, and on mobile? <laughs> yeah, I couldn't do that. You wouldn't catch me playing... I, I can't think of a skill-based game you could catch me playing on mobile. Maybe there's uh, something that only requires some basic input. Um, but yeah, we might already... Oh, we don't have core fragments. So we definitely don't have ships on the way here just yet. Um... We need more solar panels. So that we can support... Was it 15... Uh, core mining drills? We need to put... We need to send 375 megawatt 
down this elevator. We currently have 170 megawatt to spare. Um, what's our total? 273. Right? Um, so if we have 1,000 and we have 273... Well, if we double it, we should comfortably have um, more than we need. We could even add a couple of drills if we want to. Um, but yeah, first things first, I need to uh, find some room in my inventory for the scaffolding. How about this? I need some life support, though. Yeah, we've still got that. Um, that'll do for now, I think. And we start placing... Get the square all lined up first. What? Oh. That makes sense. Alright. Follow within the lines. Whoops. So the construction ship normally carries enough for the default uh, outpost. So we should already have more than we need um, to double the solar output. Actually, um, is it too late? I, I had a little idea that I wanted to aesthetically make it look like kind of like a giant satellite, uh, even though it's attached to a space elevator, with uh, with long solar panels sticking out the sides. But the that little bit of terrain right there would kind of ruin it anyway. So big squares should be fine. And this goes here, and this goes here, grab some more scaff, that's a lot of weight, what's a lot of weight? Uh, should I go straight to Max and skip EOL and QS? A sort of in... Wait, what? Oh, mech bosses. You, you talked about weight, and then you said mechs. I was imagining Battletech stuff for a second there. What's weight? What weight are we talking about? Soaring insignia is pretty hard to get... And honestly, uh, if you're not particularly disoriented by grav potions, you really don't need it that badly. Um, especially to beat the Moon Lord. I mean, it, hmm, it, it does make it a lot easier to get over his beam. Unless, of course, like last time, you have Rod of Discord, and then... As long as you know approximately when it's coming, it's extremely easy to avoid. And that's like... 80% of the challenge of fighting the Moon Lord. A mixture of timing and position management. And just, like, knowing his schedule before you even fight him. So that you can avoid his energy beam without running out of space. That should not reach all the way up. Whoops. Uh, whoopsie daisy. Okay. I guess I'll pick up all this excess scaffolding. We'll probably still have more than enough. And... Pop. And... 
pop. And pop. Well, that's not really a pop, is it? Decom that. Grab some panels, grab some bots if I don't have them right now. That'll do. And give me the rest of the solar panels. I wish it wouldn't, like, cut my inventory when I drop... when I'm forced to drop to the floor with the jetpack. Big question is, is everything alright on Calidus? Everything is fine on Calidus, I'm sure. Let's have a look. Oh, I have some scaffolding I didn't finish back here a while ago. But that's no big deal. How's Nalvis doing? Still still quite a lot of bugs to clear before we need to scan again. What about... Uh, was it Bombato? Bombato scanning is creeping towards completion. Actually, I think we forgot to re-enable scanning here. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, and what about biters? I'm still seeing a few. They're pretty sparse, but there's a lot of ground to cover. I think it'll take... Oh, there's quite a, quite a few more over this side, actually. Yeah, I think it'll still take a while to clear the biters from this planet, even though the percentage is quite low. Turns out we just defended against meteors. We've still got 900 rounds left, not counting what's in the... like the 10 to 12 rounds in each gun as well. So our ultimate Vitamelange planet should be good to go in the not to distant future. But currently our Vitamelange, our spice, is bottlenecked on stone. So <laughs> let's fix that first. And let's go back and get accumulators and uh Holmium, I mean uh power poles. Pylons. Gimme gimme gimme. Where are the accumulators? I saw them. There they are. Uh, and I could probably swap out some of these accumulators, if not all of them, up the top for solar panels, because these ones here just have to be enough to support uh, the power spikes when trains go up and down the space elevator. So... Actually, well, I'm probably going to find I have, like, exactly the number of solar panels I need for this design anyway. Well, there's Immafite, EOL, Empress of Light, Wish Me Luck. Oh, good luck. It's definitely one of the toughest fights in the game. I've never actually done the... Daytime Empress of Light. Not entirely sure how you're supposed to do it. Ridley, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Where are you main base now? Uh, main base is on Hagen. It is the cold planet uh, very close to the interstellar map in the original system. Well, it's technically a moon. It's a bit smaller. Oh no. Robots be recharging. Get in here, you. That's what I get for not reclaiming that uh, scaffolding by hand. Newest base names? Name in the newest base. When you say the newest base, do you mean an outpost, or, like, Hagen Orbit? Just play with limit of one projectile? <laughs> Indeed. Oh, 
Alright, what kind of power left over to... Oh, wow, that is... Yeah, that, that's more than we need. That's going to be fine. Alright. Let me put some of this away. Um... And I think... Haven't we already got all the infrastructure in place? I just need to reconnect some of these wires, which I can do remotely. Is that everything? It says out of 6 gigawatts, but that's not accurate. Um, but yeah, everything seems to be working. Let's check every drill, just to make sure. Uh, entity, we have 15. And for each one, if we see it working, and all four... Uh, core fragments... All four containers have core fragments, then we know it should be fine. Uh, and then we'll also check that our trains can path to every single one of them. This one's not working. Probably because I didn't put these belts here. So it's down uh, southeast. That was this one. The This is why we check these things. I also forgot this one here. Bruh. It's on the same line. That won't take as long to check as it otherwise might. Looking good. Cool. So what's our rate on... Well, we should be able to calculate it. Uh, 96 core fragments per second. We do actually need a 16th one to, uh, to get 98 per second. Assuming that a 16th one would actually go that far. According to my math earlier, it should. Um, but yeah, we can see it from our actual rate here. It's looking... Uh, it's actually, it actually fluctuates more than you would think. That's weird. I know all the storage is uh, nowhere near full. I'm pretty sure. So we're looking at 4.2, 4.3k per minute is about 70... 71 per second? That doesn't sound right. Maybe one or two of the drills are fully... Oh, they are. They are indeed. Alright. Now we'll take our train here and make sure that every station can be reached by holding control as if we're going to make a temporary stop. It's still possible that we've missed a signal somewhere and the train will be unable to come back. But we'll soon find out. Alright. Down we go. And why don't I borrow this train? To get to our outpost over here. Oh, uh, how about temp stop? And put the temp stop right be before core fragment pickup. Nice and fast. Let's see how well that battery... Oh, I can't. Okay. Wait here for a sec, please. I forgot to bring blue belt. No, luckily I picked it up incidentally. And four. Fantastic. Alright, I want to see exactly how... Uh, that our train can get back. And I want to see how much, how quickly this drains the battery here. Not very, I don't think it was... Oh, what are you doing? What? Get... What? Sit... Who said you could... 
Oh, I guess this stop's not actually ready. It doesn't have a train load. That was my faulty assumption there. Okay. All right. Well, evidently the train can go back with the signaling on this part of the, uh, part of the rail. Oh yeah, of course it's not full. I literally just got it working. That, that might help. All right. So we'll activate the other two trains. Ben Wu, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And I'll just check they have fuel and energy and advanced electric engines. Fantastic. Uh, let's go to core fragment pickup. Let's go to stacker number two, number three, and core fragment pickup. No path back to this elevator, apparently. Really? Wait, wait, wait. What's your destination? Stacker? Oh, I didn't update the space elevator. The, the proper space elevator name. Um, What's this planet called? Also, let me catch up with chat. Uh, Stuskin, welcome in. Why is your main base not on the starting planet? A few reasons. I'll get into that in just a moment. El Waito, thank you very much for the raid. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Are you winning, son? That is the question everyone's asking me lately. Uh, I think we're doing okay. So this is Toucan. T-O-U-Can. We need to replace... We need to replace uh, Stromhurst with Toucan. At... Uh, at the stations. Oh, and I sh it'll probably be easiest if I just shift right click, shift left to update these schedules. Fantastic. After you. And up we go. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So the reason that I didn't build my main base on the starting planet. No biters, not on this world. Very convenient for us. Um, there's a couple of reasons. Uh, so let's look at our main base. Located right here, Hagen. Uh, in no particular order as they come to mind. Hagen is smaller than Nalvis, which means we pay less in space elevator cable maintenance cost. Um, that's not that big of a deal, and it doesn't really matter for too long, but it's it's a small reason. We also pay less to get off-planet with rockets and so on. Um, or delivery cannons. That's only energy, though. Uh, the other thing is that we get some sort of exotic resource on the main planet. That's nice too. I've never, never wanted for Cryonite since we got here, not even once. Um, and ice, ice is very, very convenient to be able to make on your main planet. Uh, the other thing though, apart from all of that, is Hagen is, a, is at least in the starting, well, it's not always Hagen here, but in our case, Hagen is as close as we can get while being on a planet where we can use productivity modules uh, to being uh, close to the interstellar map. And that's important for a few reasons. Um, the distance that spaceships travel... Is this guy okay? This guy does not look okay... It's got fuel, it's got... That's weird. Well, it should sort itself out, eventually. If you look very closely, you can see the pixels shivering. This arm moving very, very slowly. We'll eventually get some nuclear fuel here. I'll be happy to see the back of needing nuclear reactors on our spaceships. 
Uh, but yeah, the interstellar map is basically the exit point for our spaceships as they go interstellar. Um, the way spaceship distance works in this game is they have these lanes that they follow. It's not like it works out orbital mechanics or something. You know, if we want to fly from Hagen to Nalvis, we go this way, and this way, and this way. Uh, the distance covered within the solar system compared to an interstellar voyage, you would think would be minuscule, but it's really not. Um, uh, planets in these two systems, at the very least, uh, are close enough that there's no incentive for us to use uh, a, a trick that's going to save us a lot of fuel that I'll get into in a moment. Um, but basically, with these short interstellar trips, um, it's actually a significantly longer trip if the ship also has to go all the way back in here from the edge of the solar system. Like, it's a much bigger fraction of the journey than you would think. This goes double for when we start abusing Boanestra, which is an anomaly which is located effectively equal distances to everything else. Every exit or entry, uh, every, everywhere where it says interstellar map like this, is exactly 10,000 distance away from uh, Foenestra. And by flying there and then changing our destination, we can save a lot of travel time. Like these basic ships, the haulers that are a bit slower than our construction ship get there in something like, what, seven or eight minutes? So 16 minutes from anywhere to anywhere-ish. So by aiming for really big planets that are at the very edge of the solar system, uh, we're basically getting the shortest journey, no matter which solar system they're in. Less meteors on further planets? I don't know. Never really noticed. We also get less solar, so it's a bit harder to get started, but like... The solar power that we get from orbit is still lots. Um, it, it's still relatively trivial uh, to spam a bunch of solar panels in orbit. I mean, at first, it's going to be really expensive to get all the scaffolding and solar panels and stuff. Um, but, you know, eventually it's like, it's nothing. I'm pretty sure solar panels are still... As good as it gets for power for UPS. I don't know if, like... I doubt if beaming power here and using high temp turbine generators, which we don't even have yet, would be faster, uh, like, UPS-wise, than having a bunch of solar panels here. Um, but whatever the case. Whatever the case. What is happening here? Oh, we have no Logibots here yet. That's why. Give me those Logibots. Which I've already got a few of. And make some room. Here we go. So we've even got spares. We didn't accidentally, accidentally link the robot network or anything. Why are these Logibots being so lazy? Oh, 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 I forgot. That's one filter I forgot to set. So we only allow specifically the type of core fragment we're looking for in here. Uh, stone. There we go. It's harder to remember the signals that we have to change that are invisible unless we click on them. It's 
So once we've got like 9,000 uh, core fragments here, which we already do, um, I can actually see it from here without clicking on Hagen Orbit. This tells us what... Uh, this this input here from the red wire, I think, tells us what's on the memory cell back in Hagen Orbit. Let's set to 35. How high did I set the loop? 60. Okay. Every, once per second, uh, this central clock is cycling timing. And all of these outposts are using a receiver from that and the exact same number of combinators before the signal gets up here. Uh, and they're basically using it to take turns to send signals on the same channel. Um, and then it goes back to Hagen Orbit. And if certain conditions are met, we put something on this memory cell. So it receives it from the green. This is the red... Wait, what? No, it receives the reset from the green, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If anything greater than 9k, output everything. That's our input to our memory cell. The green wire is the reset for the memory cell. Okay, so how much have we got here? 44,000. Oh, core fragment stone on the green wire isn't greater than zero. Look at that. It's it's reading like negative 300 just because bots are moving core fragments around, despite the many, many core fragments that we've like got available here. Uh, the green wire is... What's in here? Oh, no, it should read zero. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. The green wire is what's in these chests, minus what's reported by the robot network, so that we can deduce what's in the spaceship. Um, but yeah, the bots report negatives when they're moving stuff around. I wish I could switch that off. That causes problems. But we've actually got like 62,000 core fragments already. Um... If red equals zero output... Where are we getting the red signal from? Because this... This number has to be greater than zero. How, how does it become greater than zero? been a while since I looked at this. Yeah, no, it works for the other outposts. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, no, no. Red signal means don't send a signal. Um, so that's not outputting red, which means this should be outputting. And this, this isn't outputting except on time 35. And this is not outputting because... Oh, because we haven't reached our five-minute timer yet. That's why. So basically, we've got a five-minute cooler uh, cooldown. Is it five minutes? 18,000 ticks. Uh, 300 seconds. Yeah, five minutes. Uh, by default for these outposts, I've got a five-minute cooldown on requesting that a ship come here. So that we don't end up sending seven ships at once to the outpost. Um, but yeah, it's kind of... This has to be greater than zero. We've got an offset of negative 18,000. And we've got a timer that starts when... Uh, Hagen Orbit does not have this location on its memory cell, basically. Planet Orbit 173. Just double checking that is correct. Um, so I could, like... I could give it a boost real quick. I don't see why not. Where's my green wire? We can just go T, like 10 per tick. And once that's positive, 
Once that's positive, we'll start transmitting. So we'll see a flicker here every little while, I think. Oh, it's already happened. Uh, so we sent a report back to Hagen Orbit. Hagen Orbit Dispatch put that information on the memory cell, because that was greater than 9k. We've already dispatched a ship, it looks like. Memory cell goes... Information goes down here. If there are any available ships, it passes through to one of these... the appropriate uh, dispatch, which I haven't updated for stone yet. Here we go. Is that it? Stone dispatch? I think it is. Uh, and yeah, there should already be a ship. This is probably it. One of these two. Headed for Foenestra? The... Is there three of them? What? How? I still don't understand how we end up sending ships back to back. Uh, and we can look on their memory cell to see what their actual destination is. Planet Orbit 173. We have at least one ship on the way. This is also Planet Orbit 173. And I think the middle one is going to be Planet Orbit 173. I really don't understand how it sends multiple ships back to back like that. But it's probably okay. Probably... Oh yeah, we didn't get our lamps here because I forgot to add lamp. Over here. Yeah, are they on their way? They are. Fantastic. Alright. Do a drive-by build. And that should be fine. Okay. Glacier Wolf, Shmua, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. More Factorio on a Tuesday, fantastic indeed. Um, yeah, everything got bumped forward a day because I wanted to try KSP 2 on stream. And the state of the game made it a very easy decision to not continue with that for now. Uh, so next week we'll probably go back to the same, us the usual three days. For Factorio. Razor K, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I didn't say so. Fat boy, not so slim. Good to see you again also. Thanks for explaining. You're welcome. Captain True, good to see you again. Nice to have breakfast and a Tuesday Factorio stream. Well, maybe I'll have to have a look at the numbers and see if I should make make this the new schedule. See how much people like it. I thought solar panels were the best for UPS. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, how much more basic can you get, especially in orbit where the sun... I don't know if it would help the UPS, the fact that, like, sun doesn't go up and down. The way it's coded, it might just not make a difference. But, like, you've just got this thing sitting here producing a specific amount of power indefinitely. I'm pretty sure you can optimize that to not require a whole lot of calculation, right? Will you try KSP2 after patches? Yeah, I just don't know how long that'll be. Um, it was at the point... A couple of days ago when I tried it, or three days ago now, I guess, where the last, the moon mission that we tried to do near the end of the stream, well, in the last, like, two hours, kept blowing up for no reason. Um, and one of our craft spontaneously exploded just from a Kerbal doing EVA, so that was cool. Low Agro Gamer, thank you very much for the raid. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Welcome, Raiders. So, we should have a ship... Uh, I wish I could see their destination from here. Mm, 
but we should have a few ships that are either approaching Foenestra or are now on their way here. I kind of want to wait around until they get here, just to confirm everything's working. Streaming satisfactory? Fantastic. How was it? Also, it did not- it does not take long to fill up these, uh, storages with these trains. We've got more than what our biggest ship is going to be for storage. So I don't know if we need to add any storages here. I want to keep the bot travel distance as short as possible. Um, but I was thinking maybe when it comes to the bigger ships later on, uh, I might have to add a lot, and I do mean a lot of storage here somewhere. Or at least program the thing to read how much, how many core fragments we've got in these containers. Uh, so that we effectively have more of a buffer to decide what we're doing with our spaceships. Um, but yeah. I'm excited to see our first stone heading back to Hagen Orbit. I think we already built the stone core fragment processing, right? Here it is. Let's add a little tag there. Uh, and for the millionth time, I've forgotten to do a train to take uh, Vitalik Reagent. Oh, we haven't even built any yet. Uh, but yeah, I need to manually make a train to send Vitalik Reagent up the space elevator. So what are we missing? Oh, glass, right. Glass and Vinamelange, which are both... We both... Uh, both of those things we're short on. Everything Vinamelange we're short on because we don't have stone, we don't have sand right now. And we just got our... I believe it was 96 core fragments per second um, outpost set up for stone. That's two can. I could scan and like find the one more core ma uh, one more core seam to push it over the edge to 98 so that we could theoretically keep our uh, core fragment processing build going at full speed. I guess we're kind of busy scanning um, Bombato though. And again, it shouldn't take long. You know what? I should really do it while I'm here. Let's find one more. Well, however, however many it takes, because we've got enough power. Uh, we need one more... Probably one or two more core fragment seams. On planet. Just to push it over 98 per second. Did you sort the petroleum storage yesterday? Uh, I believe so. Or the petroleum throughput, do you mean? Let me have a peek back on Hagen real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got a lot of petroleum now. We've gone from zero to yes with our petroleum. I I was really shocked at how how much faster crude oil processing is if we go the heavy oil path. And the fact that it only takes tier 3 productivity modules to actually get more out of our oil. Uh, well, if we've got advanced... I don't know if it changes the uh, calculation enough. Um, I think it, with tier 3 it was barely ahead, right? So it was barely ahead of light oil. So if we had regular chemical plants here instead of advanced chemical plants where we could only have three uh, productivity modules. Um, we'd probably get slightly more for our crude oil by doing the light oil recipe. The one that focuses on light oil anyway. But yeah, this re recipe is way faster. And because we have enough production steps and enough uh, productivity modules, 
we actually get more oil for our oil um, by doing it this way. So that's a huge win. Turns out I'm not going to have to build, like, I don't know, 12 uh, crude oil processing blocks. In fact, maybe we've already... Why is this not working? There's crude oil up here. There's no water. Why is there no water? 9.9. .9. Huh? How is there no water here? Do you see what's wrong? What? Nani? That's really strange. We're not consuming the water right now. I don't see anything working. Huh. Okay. Give that some attention in a bit. Pump in an invalid place? If we can place the pump, it should be working. What? You're joking. Did did using picker dollies to do the equivalent of turning it off and on just make it work? Bruh. Yeah, it's never that the offshore pump is in an invalid place, because you can, like, place it here, get it working, and then cover it in landfill, and it'll still work. Scary, indeed. Fixed it. Yes, we did. Peace to keep. Arthur is lacking. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. 2442 versus 2432, or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the tier 3 prod modules, and with 4 prod modules in the chemical plants, it was barely ahead. But when we get better prod modules, um, it'll actually be a significant improvement. It was like double or something with prod 9s. More than double, I think. But, like, with the heavy oil, it goes faster anyway, so why wouldn't we? There's literally no downside. You don't even have to change the shape of the build or anything. Alright. So that's fixed for now. These two, I was a bit lazy and in a hurry, so I didn't do as much... Oh. Uh, as much water throughput as I should have. But with our massive overabundance of water... Of, sorry, crude oil at the moment, I don't think we need to stress. You had to dollies this pipe when you retrofitted? Must have bugged then? Maybe. Oh, here's our ship. I kind of want to ride it back. I don't know if this is the first ship or if we missed it already. We can't see it leaving here because it's going to the anomaly. So, on the memory cell here, it's got uh, our home system and it's got plus six. So it's like one plus six. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. I think I did this wrong. Uh-oh. I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure the signal ID for stone we came up was six. So that should be one plus five, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so we're going to end up with at least one ship. I mean, I could, like, turn this signal to zero and change it back when we get back there. Um, why is there only one ship here? I saw three of them leave. Like, back to back to back. I didn't catch the last one, did I? They should be, like, here, if that's the case. Well, whatever the case, I think we're going to end up... It sounds like we're going to end up with two ships hovering at Hagen orbit that we have to find and adjust this little number here. Uh, no, I did set this to... Oh, here it is. Okay, so... If anchor to target left clamp equals 5, output everything. And that goes to the memory cell. 
so under some condition, output one anchor clamp. Constantly output four, so that totals to five. And uh, moon orbit 1180 is our home location. We don't have a drop-off with ID 7, I think it is, that the ships are going to try to land at. So it's not actually going to cause any problems, except that the ships are going to be a little confused. They do tend to, like, appear here for a moment as they head towards the anomaly. And then they disappear, I think. Is this the one I'm standing in? Yeah, it is. And it disappears. West, dude. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, so somewhere or other... There are two other ships. This one, I need to put this number back here once we land back at Hagen Orbit. Um, I need to find the other two ships to fix them as well. Or I could temporarily set the ID of that. I think that'll be easier. Um, so I need to add one to this. The first few ships will be looking for anchor to uh, anchor to target left clamp seven, and then we'll change it back, and that's not going to cause problems with any other ship, and that should catch all of them actually. Much easier. Thanks for the luck, West dude, and Veldak, and Glacier Wolf, I guess. About to luck because of sleep. Fair enough. Welcome to ASMR stream. Uh, I need to get our construction ship to chase us home as well. Where was it? Capellus? Toucan Orbit. Oh. There's our three ships that are arriving. So there's... The one I'm in now was sent earlier. Like five minutes prior, I guess. Okay. Well, in any case... Uh... It, if that's the case, then this ship we're in is probably the only one on its way back right now. Cool, cool, cool. So that means we only have to change the clamp ID uh, once this ship gets back. Nani, indeed. Mochiro. Uh, to do Biocat 3. Do we want to do that yet? We haven't made any Biocat 3. We're always waiting for tier 3 biomass, which never happens because because we still need to make the train that brings up Vitalik Reagent. We also have to make the Vitalik Reagent, which is why we're chasing stone right now, because there is never... Ooh, we got some glass at least. Uh, there's never enough stone, and stone is our current bottleneck for everything Vinamalange. Actually, it certainly doesn't hurt to get some stone, especially from an infinite source, but I wonder if I... Sh I wonder if I've got more stone than I thought. No, I already checked this. I was going to say maybe we need more sand production from stone deliberately. First of all, apparently we did do that. It's down here. Uh, and second of all, I, I'm pretty sure I remember checking yesterday, uh, looking around at how much stone we've got in all of our pickup stations and such, and it's not doing so well. It is far behind demand for the moment. The stone backlog was good while it lasted, indeed. You were short of stone in the early game on Hagen, yes. And then we were very much not short on stone at all for a long time. We would, I think we were just like, 
getting enough stone from core fragments and stuff that it exceeded our needs. Oh, I'm really looking forward to... Uh, there's one problem. I I'm very tempted to do a little bit of uh, spaceship floor cheese in order to build machines that are supposed to be in space when we do matter conversion. Because on the surface is where we do all of our storage of stuff that we've got too much of from core fragment processing, right? Um, I don't really want to have to take it up the space elevator and then into matter conversion and then down the space elevator. Not just because it would cost us more, it would also, you know, be another set of trains that only have one job and yeah, I don't like it. Especially at Especially when we're at the point where we need to manage our UPS a bit more. Alright, what's our ETA? We are approaching the anomaly. 3,000, or rather 2,800, 2,750, 2,700 until we get there. Cheese for the sake of UPS is a fair cheese, <laughs> indeed. Yeah, it's just running a machine that's supposed to be in space. Assuming we can still do that. I saw Myclat doing it, so... I learned it from you. Well, more to the point, I'm pretty sure we can actually do that. Was the point that I was getting at. No, I just remembered... Oh, no. I'm pretty sure I left a bunch of my stuff... ...up here. Uh, can we... I think we can pick it all up, actually. No, 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 stop, stop, stop. Yeah. God damn it. I didn't want this robo-network to pick it up. I didn't even realize it had, had the reach. Uh, I think we have some... storage chests here... Don't tell me all of the construction bots, all two of our construction bots just went there. And now I can't do this remotely. Oh, that is unfortunate. That is very unfortunate. Um... Do I have a way I can make this happen with picker dollies? Oh, I might. I m might have a way to make this work. I'm gonna save first. Oh, here we go. We are at the anomaly. And now we change destination to Hagen Orbit and we save a whole lot of time. Fantastic. Alright, I'm going to save before I try this. I have a devious plan. Send a spider on the baby ship. The baby ship's not going to get that far. It runs off solar power and it's got liquid rocket fuel. What Pink said might work? You can set a temporary request for what the construction bots are carrying. Oh, that's true. That might be easier. Let me show you what I had in mind. Um, okay, so we're gonna... We're gonna mark something for deconstruction. Making sure that there are no... Oh. How much range does that Roboport have? Not too much. Okay. Here's the plan. Mark this for deconstruction. No one's going to decon it because they can't reach. Pick a dollies... Uh, pick a dollies this to the left. Which we can do because that's marked for decon. 
Can I unmark it for decon now? I can. Okay. And now we can put an inserter here. And we can make it unconditional. And we can hope that it'll put construction bots in. Which it will. Okay. And then we should have enough construction bots to... That's like a thousand rail, though. And there's no room in it here. I think we will have to make uh, a temporary request here. But yeah, that's my that's my devious plan to get some construction bots uh, in the RoboPort. Upgrade baby ship, but it's baby ship. Okay, so I'm guessing. I'm guessing I can pick a dollies this back without, like. Come to think of it, why didn't these construction but Oh, this was. Dope. This was not marked for decon, that's why. Okay. And. And go. I don't want these guys to pick it up. Yeah, we are going to have to make requests for it. Rail. Thousand. Stack inserter. We're going to have to ask for all kinds of inserters, it looks like. Uh, more stack inserters. Uh, steel chests. And superior filter inserters. This guy belongs to the other robot network. I'll attend to the bonk in just a moment. Apparently there's already superior inserters in here? There are. Okay. There we go. And... How do I... How do I not have these guys do the decon? Hmm... I could pick a dollies it out of the way, I guess. I'd have to... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... 10, 20 tiles? Okay. And then? We did it, except for the part that where this guy's gonna hover forever. Hmm. Is there a way I can steal him somehow? Oh, I know. No, not like that. Uh, pick this up again. Bring this back up. And then mark, uh, sorry, place a steel chest here. There we go. There we go. All right. Just bring this down one. Decon that. Bring this up. And that's how it's done. Perfect. Now we can send this back to Hagen Orbit. Actually, don't do that. Send it via Foenestra, otherwise it'll take 40 minutes months or so already. to get back. Hello, Mr. Streamer. Mucky, thank you very much for the 19 months. Have we really been doing that this long? Wow. Thank you so much, and welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Upgrade baby ship. How would I upgrade baby ship while keeping the essence of baby ship? Serious question. Serious answers only. You didn't build the chest first? Or set it to logistics only? Logistics only. Oh no, because then it would have... Yeah, I thought of that. It would have connected these logistic networks and we would have had pandemonium. 
That's the trouble with that one. When do we get back? Two minutes twenty. I thought we would have been closer. Uh, so as soon as we leave, I need to get off the ship. Otherwise, I'm going to get trapped in space again. Uh, and I need to change the ID of this thing back to what it's supposed to be. Do you ever think about how cool it is that Saturn has a giant ring around it? Saturn is incredibly cool. Beyond amazing. What do you need from... What do you need from upgraded baby ship? Well, I can't send baby ship into Stella because it's just a couple of rocket engines with some solar panels slapped to it. It'll have no power as soon as it's not in a solar system. It doesn't even have any accumulators. If we try to send it somewhere via Foenestra, it is going to have literally zero power. Like, literally 1%. So, 8, 16, 32 kilowatts? I think? Hmm... That's an experiment I've never tried. What? Okay, I'm really curious now. I kind of want to... Should we jump into a separate save to test this idea? What if the only power consumer... What's minimum power consumption? 100 kilowatt on one laser turret. We could use a gun turret, but I want it to be something that is like can sustain itself indefinitely, uh, except for rocket fuel. So what if we had one laser turret, one spaceship rocket engine, that puts minimum consumption at 103.3 kilowatts? We're obviously going to slow down a lot whenever the laser fires. But, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure there are no... Oh, never mind. Why did I think there were no, uh, asteroids on the way to Foenestra and back? Oh, we're actually almost home. It could still be the case, but I don't... I don't know. ETA 13 seconds, let's get ready to bail. What would happen if I was here the moment that it landed? I bet I would be teleported with it. All right, and then this is supposed to be ID 6. I'm pretty sure this is the only ship that had the wrong ID given to it for where to land. You'll need more lasers if you go faster, yes. But um, I think the laser would suck power so aggressively it would automatically slow down the ship. We could also set a minimum speed. We could maybe slap an accumulator on it. Um, but I want to check... Oh, construction ship. That's that's one that's currently headed to Foenestra, right? There are indeed rocks to shoot down, always. I think it would have been a nice touch if the rocks all disappeared. I guess it wouldn't make sense... Not that Foenestra makes sense. But it would seem more like otherworldly or something. And there's our stone core fragments. And I'm 97,000% sure I haven't made a rocket. A rocket? A train. Not a rocket. Slightly different. Um... I wanted to bring up some batteries for this, actually. Oop, give me that. That'll do. Um, we need some... Actually, wouldn't it be easy to make here? Personal batteries? Let's see. I already 
automated them downstairs with a, a lot of superconductive cable that should last a while, but I'm pretty sure everything we need is right here, and there's no productivity bonus um, available for making personal batteries, right? Yeah, I should definitely do it in space, especially since this is where we get our personal solar panels. Um, where do I want to slap this in with our constant combinators? How about here? Alright, so... I'm pretty sure this is a prerequisite for this, is a prerequisite for this, is a prerequisite for this. Uh, and that is how it be. Alright, so personal battery, personal battery, personal battery, and personal battery. I only care about the last one, so making... However many we make until the recipe changes is fine. And then bring them here. Wait. No, we want the big personal batteries. Whoops. Whoops, whoops. Oh my god. I'm trying to get this out of my hand at the same time, that's why. Alright. Looks like I don't even have to add any prerequisites or anything. It's already happening. I do need to whitelist the battery prerequisites. Why can I cram those in? How about over here? Why not? Battery, up to two stacks. Was this stack size smaller? No, it's not. Um, personal, big personal battery, there we go. And we don't have to keep the end product in this chest. Okay. So, I think I want, uh, like a buffer chest here. For all the big personals. Here they come. Only three so far? Oh, that's actually 23. Slightly more. Fantastic. And while we're at it, let's start updating our trains. Wait. No, the ones that stay in orbit don't need the personal batteries. It's only the ones that stay or go to the ground. Stay on or spend some time on the ground. Good to know. We don't have to update... 300 trains, more like 150, I guess. And I think this is our template. It is not our template. Um, let me just copy the schedule from one of these guys. And we're going to be moving Reagent. Uh, that's the drop-off to make the Reagent. Never mind. Uh, I need to make a drop-off for it. I think that'll go here with the other green stuff. Maybe this one? Actually, I think Reagent's going to be very slow for its stack size, so I'll put it here. 
where the train has to go two centimeters further, I know. And that's going to be everything signal, reagent, is that the right format? It is, and this is reagent, oh, come on, reagent provider, there we go. Alright, so Vanilla Train uh, drops off Reagent here, picks up Reagent here, up the elevator, go to depot, wait one second, when this has train limit greater than zero, go empty cargo, um, Hmm. Probably could have saved a lot of space and stuff with all these depots if I had the drop-off trains for these things. I guess we've got the room with the signals, right? What if the drop-off train was just sitting here all the time until it was empty? And then it goes, and then it goes straight back downstairs and waits at the depot downstairs until there's enough for pickup. And we could probably see more clearly by whether there's a train here, whether or not our resources are saturated. And we wouldn't need, I mean, we would still need all of these trains, but we wouldn't need this many vanilla depots. Because the trains can just sit at their destination. I'll consider it. It's going to take a while to patch all of our trains like that. I guess I could... Well, I would have to go and remove the train limit. Yeah, yeah, no, this doesn't work if, we're, if we want a resource to go fast enough that we need more than one train bringing it up. That's the thing. Unless we want to have, like, two drop-offs for a resource and give them slightly different names and have different schedules on those two trains. That might be a way to go as well, but no, I think overall I like this better. All right, so up the elevator, go to depot, wait one second, wait till this has train limit greater than zero, empty, down the elevator, same thing but with pickup. Looks. Pretty good to me. Oh, no, 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 stop, stop, stop. No wonder it's so slow. Halt. Uh, I completely forgot to give it... It's upgrade. Which would make it go a lot faster and save a lot of fuel. Whoops. No, not there. Okay. Uh, give me some panels. Give me some batteries. And don't forget to give me some... electric motors. Whoops. There we go. So now it can zoom. And while it's zooming, it is consuming less fuel. Because this is partly getting used for acceleration. And it doesn't get a higher top speed just because it's got, um... Does it have a higher top speed because of this? No, it does. What am I thinking? 
Whatever the case, this covers a bunch of acceleration that this doesn't get consumed for. We've done the experiment. The fuel does last a lot longer. And I mean a lot longer. You'd have to refuel them at all those drop-offs. Uh, not if we have them wait at a depot downstairs, we can refuel them there. It's just, should we have a depot stop uh, for each train up the elevator as well as down the elevator, or just once? That's the only question. Oh, where are we going already? Wait. We already have... Oh, the train limit doesn't exist. That's fine for now. I don't think the agent goes into anything on the ground, unless we want to do prod sixes here, which I don't. Is there one thing that we need reagent for before it goes up the space elevator? Uh, unless we want to turn it into crude oil, which no. No, we definitely don't want to do that. Why would we ever do this? Oh, we get wood as well? Ugh. No. Um... Oh. Yeah, we do need it for something on the ground. We need it for Naquium processing, if we want to use prods, which of course we do. And Vitalik Epoxy. Okay. Good to know. So we're going to need a decider combinator here. And we're going to set train limit. Why does soft search reagent find four fragments? It's kind of weird. Uh, if Vitalik Reagent greater than something, output Vitalik Reagent 1, set train limit, Vitalik Reagent. Just because I like to see that symbol here instead of an L. And it stacks to 50, right? So 50 times 100 is 5,000. Uh, if... And we're only going to be checking these two containers, and they have limits, so... If Vitalik Reagent equals 5,000, train limit is 1, and for LTN, train uh, ride stack threshold 100 effectively does the same thing. Minimum train length 3, that's fine. Okay. Now, more importantly in the short term, um, I need to make a train to run stone core fragments. Core fragment? <laughs> I see. Milestone achieved? Damsel, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Hello, friendo to you as well. What have you been up to? I haven't seen your streams lately. Um, what was I trying to do here? Oh, I think we've got everything we need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can make a train here, I believe. That's not the train I'm looking for. Move along. Alright, we need some advanced additional electric engines, some solar panels, and some batteries. It's a pity we can't run our trains off just that. I mean, I get that it's, it's forcing us to do more of a logistical challenge with the batteries to get the reward of faster trains, but... At the same time, trains that are actually just electric would be cool. Had some things to deal with, but all good. Glad it's sorted out. Uh, we need some batteries. And that should be everything, except... Or frag... Wait. 
stone. Can I do it already? I think we can. Stone core fragment. Where art thou? I believe it's this one. Oh, this is like backward. Down the spell of Ada. Uh, empty core fragments here. Did I really name that station that way? Yeah, yeah, I did. Okay, that's fine. Um, and we need the stone core fragment pickup. Is this it? Upstairs. And we might need two trains since we're doing like just under 98 per second. Let's do another one right here while it's easier. Petri Cottontail, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Need some more. I need seven to be precise. Uh, nope. That's that's wrong. I didn't need seven. Oops. All right, and don't forget some fuel. Five should be more than enough to get it started. And up the elevator we go. You're gonna turn tear down the scuff from the old spaghetti uh, sooner or later. Keeping it for the memories? I guess we could. I've actually got a whole lot of other stuff that needs to be teared up that is not as visible. We don't look at it as often. And that's going to be a lot more UPS expensive. I've got two outposts that I haven't updated to use the spaceships and space elevators. And we've got Nalvis, which is massive. Um, but we need to clear the biters first on Nalvis. That's taking a long time. All right, let's go get our stone core fragments. Oh, let's look at the graph for stone. And what do we got? Last minute. 3.7k per minute. That's produced. Still uses real power from the grid though. There's a mod for just electric chains. It's definitely cool, but feels a bit cheaty since it's infinite range. Does use real power from the grid though. That's pretty neat. I wonder if it's like a limitation of what you could do with mods. Uh, are you okay here? What's going on? Oh, I set this to full cargo. That's um. That might need an adjustment. Wait for empty. And I did set the other one to full. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Here comes our waterfall of stone. Fantastic. It's only happening at half speed so far because uh, we haven't hit our threshold for the train limit to reduce on this side, but stone is already up. Oh, it's kind of wavy. It'll be a lot more consistent in a minute. It was about here. We're already up to 5.4k per minute. Very nice. So what do we get from half a block? Oh, we've already got two block, uh, two half blocks. 25 per second, and this is 50. A stack a second of stone isn't too bad, I think. For one outpost. Well, just one outpost can very almost keep up with this. Or rather, 
Now one outpost can keep up with this if I go and add like t one or two more coal mining drills, but I was, uh, I forgot, I, I forgot slash I was too lazy. But we'll obviously do that if we have more stone. And we also get some regular core fragments, um, at a rate that is not insignificant, 6.3 per second. And that is going to help with everything. Also, we do get stone out of the regular ore fragments, of course. We actually get eight stone... We get like a little bit less than 50% stone, not counting prods. 20 becomes 8. That'll help as well. Did I make... I'm pretty sure I did, yeah. Did I make our train for reagent? Here it is. So, how long until we get some... Ooh! Destination full? What? I was trying to pick it up still. Okay, so this train is trying to deliver Vitalik uh, Vitamolange Extract. It's the same problem. We're waiting on stone. We're waiting on sand to get more vit extract. How is stone looking up here? It's on the way. Fantastic. What are we bonking? Did you stop the scan for toucan? Oh, crap. That was one of the things I really wanted to not forget. Now it's much bigger than we need it to be. I hope we're not going to get another one of those bugs where... I, I don't know if it is a bug, but I can't... On, on one of our outposts, when, when I trim it, there's a big excess area that doesn't get trimmed, and I don't know why. Okay. Maybe now would be a good time to catch a ride... Uh, I was going to say catch a ride to... Why do we have dropped cargo here? How many Logibots do we have? 50. What? What is this? That's odd. Uh, yeah, we're not going to be sending a ship to pick up stone core fragments for a minute. I think I'll have to take the construction train there. We may as well, since we've already scanned that, add a couple more core drills. Just enough to saturate our, uh, our one block. And I think if we want to increase the throughput, instead of... Where's our construction ship? Oh, I think I know the answer. No? What? Construction ship? Where you at? Oh, Anestra! Oh, no. I forgot to... I forgot to tell it to come home after that. It's going to be like five minutes or so? Four minutes? Alright, let me just check I didn't miss something earlier. If they added maybe expensive electric rails, ooh, that'd be cool. And you die if you step on them. Uh, no, I think we're good. Okay. How much sand do we have now? Not as much as I thought. I probably over-engineered this like crazy. Yeah, this can chew up 115 stone per second. I don't think we're going to be needing another block of that for a minute. Uh, 
Hmm. This is technically not balanced. I mean, it should be pretty much balanced. And where are you going with that? To make glass. Wasn't glass the... No, it was extract. Uh, I think I should increase the priority of this one. At least for now. I really want to see Vitamelange flowing. Alright, what are we going to do after that? Our ship should be here almost. ETA. 2 minutes 40. Alright. Don't need to be carrying all of these right now. I really need to reorganize my personal requests. Because this is a lot of stuff that I haven't used in a while. So... Oh, I keep... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're waiting for Vit reagent. How much do we get out of it? One reagent makes 40% significant biomass. That's actually kind of harsh. Although, for the stack sizes, that's actually huge. 50 to 5. So if this was 10%, we're actually getting four train loads of significant biomass for every one train load of reagent that gets dropped off here. So once we finally get some momentum there, that'll be nice. What should we build in the meantime? I think I want to get in the ship and head out to our newest outpost. And... Once we're underway, I want to design something in the editor. I should also check that we don't have ships that are, like, busted somehow. What's this? Core Fragment Iridite. And at 16. That looks good to me. It's just waiting for this to empty. Do you need to set the recipe for blue biomass? Yes, I have. I have. Um, one sec. Let me get rid of this extra piece of wire that I added. Um, so basically, these four are for significant biomass. These four are the final tier of genetic data. You can see they go to different output, uh, different outputs. This one consumes um, significant biomass, and I'm just sending it straight along the belt, straight to the train. Here we are. Are we are we saturated on biomass? Yes and no. <laughs> Experimental biomass is looking for extract. That makes sense. So everything's extract right now, which traces back to stone. Which we may or may not have procured enough of. Um, already? Maybe we're playing catch-up. Maybe we need more. Did we get some sand down here? Ooh, we did. Judging by the fact that both of these have sand right now, uh, and I saw like a trainload of sand back at where we make sand, 
I think we probably have enough stone throughput now. At least for a while. But yeah, if we're gonna make a... If we're gonna make a whole other block to process stone core fragments, I think I would find another planet to get another 98 per second instead of adding any um, any more drills beyond 98 per second from the outpost that we just made. Why is this empty? That's weird. Oh! Is that a problem? Probably not. This guy is blocking this guy who's empty. It's not going to be a problem for very long the moment a ship lands. And this can empty pretty quickly and this guy's waiting to drop off. Yeah, I don't think that's a problem. That should be fine. Okay. Are we just about done refilling this thing? Not that I need all this stuff for this trip. Let's get going. Bowen Estra. Away we go. And let's jump into the editor and design I don't know what. What needs a redesign? All of these uh, identical iron copper builds. Didn't we already do this actually? Metal, uh, some kind of production. Where was it? Advanced molten iron, advanced molten copper. So it's taking them. Wait, what's the input? Solid and fluid. And outcomes... Yeah, so it's just like this block. Cool, so we've already... Uh... How much faster is it? Let's see. 1.3k per second, 30 per second, 12.8k per second. Well, let's compare. Industrial Furnace... Uh, has a crafting speed of 4, advanced industrial, advanced furnace has a crafting speed of 8, then we've got 24 versus 48. It's going to be 4 times faster. We're only doing the fluid in one block though, so that's kind of misrepresenting it. It's kind of 2 times faster. Did I not make a block to turn these into ingots as well? Where are they? I don't think I did do that. Okay, so we could have like just two blocks instead of four for the copper for the smelty and probably one block to convert them back to ingots. Anything to save UPS would be good at this point, indeed. There's no casters squeezed in here? No, didn't think so. I could have sworn when I was busy making these, I also did the things that would convert things to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure... It's going to be the exact same shape of Holmium Ingot. I just didn't make the blueprints for these, I think. Let's double check that in the editor. Okay, so we have Holmium Ingot... Uh, we have about the maximum number of casting machines that we can fit in uh, underneath a beacon. We can't put prod modules in them. And 
I think I did think briefly about using thermodynamics facilities, even though I'd have to put down spaceship floor. But they're only five times as fast, and they take up a lot more than five times as much space. It technically would be more UPS efficient. Oh, we could put four speed modules in them as well. Hmm. Let's compare real quick. Because it would be more UPS friendly. Was it thermodynamics facility? No, there we are. Ingot. Give it some speed modules. That's plus a hundred percent, one hundred and ten percent power. That's plus twenty. Wait, what? There we are, minus 70. Okay. That's so obviously going to be a lot easier to shape this and stuff. And we can do 12 on each side. And we would need 7 by 7 times 12. 580. Uh, sorry, 588 on each side of spaceship floor, assuming that putting the spaceship floor down will allow us to build this on the ground. Um, so maybe like that? Maybe we could even go ham. So how many machines is this? 24 versus 96? I don't think the size of the machines has any effect on UPS. I think that's just, like, four times better. Uh, and the rate that we get is 13 per second versus... It's faster. It is faster. We do need a solid input as well as a solid output. Um, but I'm thinking this will be worth... I don't suppose I have any... Oh, we're here. You can orbit. I don't suppose we have any spaceship floor on the ground handy. Just so I can confirm that we can indeed do this. I guess not. Uh, but yeah, I can't... I definitely can't say no to... 24 machines doing the job, uh, doing more than the job of 96 machines. When our UPS is sub 60, that's uh, that's definitely not a thing, and I'm pretty sure we can fit it. Probably. So how much uh, sand would we need? I'm pretty sure the sand is going to be about the same for all of these, right? That's only 26. And what if... I run ingot? Uh... Iron ingot doesn't need any solid. It's only molten in, molten out. That makes it easy. No doubt copper ingot would be the same. Steel, I believe, requires coke. There it is. How much? Less than half a blue belt. The entire half of the block. Oh, I think we could probably save some space. And then we don't have to do any belt shenanigans. If we do the fluid input on the outside, it shouldn't be difficult. 
That actually fits beautifully around the beacon. And what's our flow rate for each column? 408 per second. Easy peasy. Maybe that one wouldn't line up. Uh, and that's it, isn't it? How fast does it consume? 1.6k per second. It's, pre it's pretty fast. It's not that bad. We need a train every... 37 seconds-ish. Assuming that we don't build this next door to one of our blocks and just pump the fluid directly. But yeah, I think we can manage that. I think if that if it is going to be that fast, though, I would still feel better with a larger... Well, no, we've got room for um, more than three train loads of fluid here. That's actually not really a problem. Should be fine. Uh, and let's check the other recipes. I'm pretty sure... The rest of them are going to follow the same pattern as steel. Um, beryllium ingot. Uh, slightly more than half a blue belt, but we have belts that are twice as fast as that, so that's not a problem. Uh, even if I didn't also find a way to get two more tiles of width. So that we can't, we can just do like input belt, output belt on this side, this side, and in the middle. That's not even a problem. Yeah, we're definitely getting rid of this stuff. Um, and I'm pretty sure the rest of them are going to be basically the same. Half a belt of sand, if that. Uh, iridium ingot. Wait, does that require two fluid inputs? None of the others required two fluid inputs, right? Let's go all the way through. Iron and copper is just fluid. Steel is fluid and solid. Uh, these two are fluid and solid. This requires... Oh, it has steam output. So it's still a fluid and a solid. It's hardly any fluid. Much more solid compared to the others. And it has steam output. Iridium's always a lot slower than the others, so like, overall, so I don't think having to use up more space here and have fewer machines for Iridium would be much of a problem. It's only 31 steam per second. Um, I could move this down one tile to output steam. But the ones in the middle would be a problem. Yeah, I, I think we'll just use fewer machines for the Iridium. Because it's always slower anyway. Well, it's already slower just from the crafting time. 62 is way less than a belt for the entire half block, though, for the solids. 
Um, so the only question is, can I come up with a clever way to output steam? This would be plus one. Oh, wait, 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 wait. This might be easier than I thought. Uh, so we only need this to be one tile wider? On each side of the beacon? I'd obviously have to move this down a tile. We'll lose our precious beacon lineup with the middle of the block. Unless I make a different drop-off. Um, just for iridium ingots. It's fine, either way. It was already going to be taller. But yeah, that is actually all under the beacon. And... We can connect our steam with relative ease. Cool. Should we do this one first? 2.2 megawatt. Wait, if I do use this much space, uh, we're not going to have room for this. I could maybe squeeze it in somewhere else. Let's say... I don't want to flip this, so I'll have to remove all these guys. But flip and paste. And then copy these guys in. Okay. So entire block is only 12.78 ingots per second, but these are ingots we're talking about. It's only 63.9 steam per second, which would actually take like seven steam engines to eat up. Could I, could I put a steam turbine down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, will this consume cold steam? The high attempt steam turbine. We need some, I believe it was 165 degree steam. Where's the temperature? Huh? Oh. Okay. Oh, you can change how much is in this uh, magic pipe. Okay, temperature is down here, 165. And indeed, 165 degrees steam. And I think it does work. Cool, cool, cool. It would be consuming it very slowly off of just a lighted substation. Uh, let's put in a beacon, and we should see that steam drain away kind of quick. Yeah, we can consume 50 steam per second with one of these, uh, if we're trying to get rid of it. So we're not going to have a lot of difficulty squeezing in a bunch of steam turbines. There we go. That's literally all we need. Okay. Now, I want, if possible, 
Where should I put them? I'm sure we can squeeze them in somewhere. Maybe even over here. I wanted them to direct... to take stuff from these containers directly, but that might not be feasible. I could put it back here, actually. Uh, it looks kind of sketch. Maybe that's not so bad. How about here? That might actually be really good. And then... I couldn't quite do this symmetrically, that station's in the way. Maybe like this? Just do this on both sides this time? That would allow us to have a bigger storage of it here. One, two, three. That's kind of neat, actually. Oh, we should be at our destination, by the way. Let's uh, sort this out first. Speed up our... I need probably two coal mining drills. Speed up our stone core fragments just that little bit so that we don't run out of this backlog and stop getting stone at maximum speed through our core fragment processing. How's our sand looking? Still not keeping up with demand, otherwise we would have more than a train load here. How about spice? Spice is still looking very uh, bursty. Uh, what about extract? Is it because we've been making extract? Maybe? Did we get any up here? No. Nope, oh, that train is still waiting. Uh, how full is it? Not at all. Okay, then. Actually, this is really good timing. This is something I want to find out how it works. So currently, because we don't have a train load in these two containers, the train limit here is zero. Which means uh, this train has already gone to its temporary stop with the exact same location. It's now trying to arrive at this stop, which it technically hasn't done yet. I'm pretty sure the moment this fills up, um, it'll dump it all into the train because the train will like arrive at the station. At which point it starts to receive Vitamalange. I think that's how that works. And I think I need to come up with something a bit more loose, for lack of a better word, to balance and prioritize uh, Vitamalange for both of these. Or maybe we're just not keeping up with demand. We've actually got a ton of extract in here. It's literally just waiting for spice to find its way in here so that we can allow it to flow to the station. I 
Maybe I should prioritize it. The stack size is smaller. And we make more of it in the first place. And we, we've kind of already saturated it in space anyway. It, it's worth trying. We'll prioritize filling up the spice. And if, if we get it to the point of saturation before we make any extract, or at least before we allow it to go into the station, it's probably fine. That's a rough autosave speed? It really is. Blue circuit? Oh yeah, we do need to fix blue circuits. Um... We're still not using Holmium Cable for blue circuits. Do we have enough? It smells like we have enough. Uh, Holmium Ingots have probably been saturated for a while. Where's the new Holmium Ingot build? Okay, then they're not even close to saturated, actually. But we've got plenty of Holmium Cable. What are we short on? Wait a sec. This guy has no output. What the f... La la la. Um... Was that a one-off? I think it was a one-off. There's a bit of... A little bit of, uh... Pyroflux in here. So we had like 920 molten holmium in each of these machines that couldn't get where it needed to go. But that really doesn't account for... The speed of our Holmium. Where's our powder coming from? I don't even remember. Oh, it comes from here, actually. Why was that train all the way up here? Shouldn't it have gone... Boop? Or is it an old Holmium powder build? No, the old Holmium... The old Holmium builds are still running. Well, that doesn't help. We want to get rid of those now that we've got the, the new stuff. Okay. Uh, I've forgotten which squirrels I was chasing. Let's go park ourselves... Wait, I have to take some uranium. Let's go park ourselves downstairs. Put ourselves in a spider. And uh, wait for the spider's battery to charge. I might give it some more batteries, actually. And then we're going to ride to wherever this, uh, wherever the nearest new core seams are. How many did we find? Oh, we went to 23. Okay. Uh, so we've already... There's one up... I guess it goes top left first. There's one up here. You can see our base a bit better this way. We'll probably go to that. And to that one. If we go to these two, we shouldn't have to have much of a bigger trim. There's one way over here. There's one, two, three over here. There's one way up here. I think we already looked at that. I'm looking for the probably two that would require the least effort and the least additional map size after we trim.
Oh, there's one right there as well. If we're going to grab this one, we may as well grab that one, I suppose. Alright, I think I've made my choice. Uh, there's one here as well. One, two... Well, let's just put some down one by one. Send our spider over this way. Build this out. Maybe run rail down here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's design it as if we're going to put rail here. And even if we don't... We can have this bit of rail going up this way. Where's a corner I can steal? Perfection. And then we'll probably just have this rail go over here. Front right. There we go. It's actually kind of awkward. How about this? Oh, and we're almost there. Perfect timing. And our poor spider is tired. Okay. Now, how many drills do we have? Let's just confirm. I think it should be 16 now. That's 15. No, that's 16. Alright, 16 times... That is 99 per second. What did we have before? I think it was like 96... 96.257 versus 99. So it's more than 3 per second. The next drill might be slightly less than 3 per second. Um, yeah, I think... I think I'd like to stick to... 98 per second target for each outpost. And if we want more stone core fragments, we'll find another big stone planet. And that way we'll minimize the space that is taken up by each outpost. And try and, like, maximize our core fragments per space, more or less. Do I really not have the bulk rail loaders... Oh, no. Okay. Let's put another power pole down here somewhere. Where are we going? One off. And... That should get all the rail built, at least. And then we'll walk back to the Spellevator. Don't jump into the editor for the moment, otherwise I'll fall out of the Spidertron. And what can I do that's useful in the meantime? Stare at Vitamelange Extract. Oh, train's not here. We missed it, but I'm pretty sure the fact that it's gone... 
means that worked the way that I thought. Okay. I'm just realizing just how much extract we have to make with this system before we start spitting out spice. Could remove these limits. further away from the oh no uh flying might be a bit faster sorry spidertron we'll come back for you don't worry i have to say having to put uranium fuel cells in the spidertron is very annoying especially in combination with radioactive stuff damaging you when you carry it. What was I coming back here for? Some bulk rail loaders. And we should be able to trim the surface already, actually. Trim surface. Much better. Alright, that won't be anywhere near as severe on the save file size. Don't tell me, I forgot blue belt as well. Uh, should I make these purple belts? I really hate the idea of this one little exception, actually. <laughs> to the way we're managing this. Also, let's send our spider back to the spell evader. It's going to bug me to no end if I know there's like 12 pieces of purple belt where there should be blue belt on just one of our outposts. Uh, there it is. Okay. I'll go for that. Okay, away we go. I really wish we could ride vehicles without falling out of them when we jump into the editor. Just click the button with the Spidertron, go do some editing, and come back and be at our destination. That would be very nice. All right. Oh, and I need to check signaling. Oh, it should be fine. Actually, I'll add a couple of signals up here. Okay. I could summon... No, I couldn't summon a train. They're all upstairs. Uh, 
and the moment they're not upstairs, they'll find themselves upstairs again pretty damn quickly. Alright, spider, come home. And I th I'm pretty sure we're done here now, right? 16 drills. Slightly more core fragments per second than one block can process. Back at home. Only three per second for the last drill. Um, and the area that we're having to cover to add more drills is getting bigger and bigger. I think this is a pretty good compromise for each outpost. Oh wait, was there anything here? I'd better check. We don't have like hovering bots or something. No, nope, I think this is all in order. Just waiting for a ship to come by. Do we have a ship on the way? Oh, we're on our timer? No, timer is positive. Oh, we're not sending a ship because we've got tons of stone core fragments back at home. That's a good reason. Maybe I could make a prediction engine. Compare how much we've got to the rate of consumption over the last five minutes. And send a ship before it gets down to X. Instead of waiting for a specific uh, amount back at Hagen. Might be good. Um, but yeah, if this is all saturated... Um, that's looking fine, actually. Okay. Now then, switch this off back to the editor. And we can continue with this build. Which will be the most complicated version of this one. And I'll just edit it down after that. So, we already have all of our fluid input, I believe. Guess I could put this over here as well. Aeroflux go. And do they all have input? This one does not because it doesn't have a recipe. Looks like the answer is yes. Fantastic. Eagle Wolf, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. How do you switch so fast back and forth between planets and orbits? Uh, there's a few ways. So you can make shortcuts um, with the Navsat and stuff. So if if you go into Navsat, uh, if you create a pin, you can. How do I edit it? Right click. Uh, you can assign a hotkey to it. So I've got Hagen, Hagen Orbit, Helidus Orbit. I don't remember what this is. Whoops. Um, control Zero. That's Nalvis. That's our first. Uh, that's our first cargo rocket silo right there. Um, the other way you can do it is, like, if I want something in Calidus, but I don't have a shortcut for it, I know Hagen Orbit is Control-3, then I jump to the star map, and here we are. Uh, but yeah, this, this button right here, or Shift-N, when you're in the Navsat, actually, does it work from not the Navsat? Yeah, it does. 
you can jump between all of these shortcuts um, that you don't need to have shortcut keys for. Very handy. Uh, there's also Control e to go to uh, in and out of the editor, which normally would activate editor mode or not, like turn cheats on and off, sort of. Okay, um, now we just need sell it in, sell it out, right? But I also need to figure out where the Steam output is going to uh, is going to fit for some of these. Which I'm thinking probably over here, actually. I was going to wait till I put the belts in before I did this, but the path seems fairly obvious. That should all be the same... Uh, the same pipe that work. Yeah, it looks like it is. Cool, cool, cool. Very nice. Stuskin, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay. Um, and yeah, I don't think undergrounds here are going to be a problem. So now the question is just where do we put our blast cake? Delicious. 20 hundred is one train load. That doesn't sound like a lot. Let's set it to three times that. Uh, and we also need Pyroflux. Pyroflux is always slow, so one and two thirds train loads should be more than enough. And this will be... All of this design, and I haven't checked that we can get away with putting these on the ground. We'll get there. I mean, I'm pretty confident it'll work. I don't see why it wouldn't. I've done it before. I don't think they've patched it away, and this is an older version. Alright, this is making ingots of the Iridium Persuasion, and also Plate. And then we need uh, Pyroflux and Last Cake. Very good. How much blast cake do we need? 65 per second. I could probably put the fluid drop off up here, perhaps. Don't know that that's really necessary. Individually, these ma these machines only need 2.7 per second each. Um, where do I want to put this? Yeah, I guess this will have to do. I could have the belt go up this way. Alright, well I know where this one's going to be. How much does this require? 32 per second. Last cake. And... Superior inserters swing faster, so they're probably more UPS friendly. They also only cost the same power draw idle as a stack inserter. And then we need output up this way. 
Maybe like this, actually. Just like that. That should be fine. And then something similar over this way. Maybe the other way around. Input. Well, let's do the undergrounds first. in kind of an awkward place, actually. I guess... Technically... Could do something like this. That looks kind of sketch. Don't have a blue splitter. This would go here. That might be okay. Yeah, that actually kind of works really well, because this won't fit here. I don't like this part, though. One of these corners is not necessary, but that one is going to be symmetrical-ish. Well, I guess it doesn't have to. This could go down here. So, if we skip this one... And steam goes that way... And this could probably go down here... What's our overall rate? It's like 13 or something. Literally 13. So even at tier 9 modules, we're not going to be looking at more than half a purple belt. Like, for, like the entire thing. Uh, that one's going to have to be a little bit different. More like this. Down this way. Just like that. That kind of looks weird. Whatever, it's fine. And this is going to have to be a little bit squiggly. No way around that. The train stop has to go somewhere. Optimus, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Zero Shadow, welcome in also. Okay, um... So this is gonna go up here. I mean, we could merge it properly, I guess. Looks 
So that's all of this headed up this way, right? And we can just merge it down there. This one is going to be... Uh, here, I guess, is fine. So I want to copy, paste, flip most of... No, I don't. No, I do not. Okay. This part, at least, should be the same. Where's the loader? Yeah, no, that's right. And this part is going to be a little bit different, but I think the inserters are the same. This is going to go down here. And into our container. Oops. Blue loader. Okay. Uh, and we might just... Well, first of all, inputs are going to be like this on this side as well. Uh, outputs, I guess, could either go like that. That looks really ugly. Or down here, perhaps? And just meet over here. Which would look better, I wonder. I'm thinking it should all merge up the top. But... It's going to look kind of sketch at some point. I mean, I could put a splitter here, I guess. Maybe that looks less weird. Yeah, that's actually fine. It's all going to merge into one belt somewhere anyway. Which means I think I want to flip this over this side as well. Uh, except for the part where I already said I was going to replace... Mm. I don't really have anywhere I could make the steam meet other than on the sides, I think. Uh, I guess I could move these in a little bit. And this could go up a tile. And that would mean this could be symmetrical. That makes me happy. Fantastic. Alright, so this goes here, right? And then... And then this one, like this. And that should be it. Does that give us equal stuff on both sides? It does not. Whoops. I'm kind of going to want to split it here, if only for the consistency of it. Alright, let's test our, our build, shall we? 
Oh, I didn't get the outputs from here. Right down into here. What would be the best way to do that? Probably like this. And that'll be able to be symmetrical. That shouldn't look too bad. We'll put this wherever we want. I guess it's more symmetrical-ish this way. Don't forget this one. Oh, that's actually a really good fit. Kind of happy with that. All right. Uh, infinity chest. And begin. Fantastic. How much power are they drawing? 300 kilowatts each. A mere spec. Tuned into your stream a week ago. Love your content. Thank you. So I have been binging this series on your YouTube channel. Hope I can catch up before you finish this. Thank you. Reminds me I need to port some stuff over to YouTube. Thank you so much. Alright, do we have... Uh... Oh. This one's on the wrong side. So much for synchronizing those. That actually looks really good. Thirteen iridium ingots per second is actually quite a bit, especially considering it has a stack size of twenty. Um, this will obviously be for iridium ingot. Uh, we're going to have a oh. oh, I think I'll do it this way. Well, no, I, I do kind of want to have an. A ludicrous storage of ingots. Yeah, that, that's fine actually. I could either do belt pushing them or I could do an inserter. Considering that we get like 8, 16, 24, uh, that's more than a stack of iridium ingot on the belt and 45 per second is more than two stacks I, I mean I could use like yellow belt to push this across here but like I, I think a, an inserter is a bit better a bit more precise uh, so we want to do provide stack threshold 110 that should probably be fine how fast does this swing? 1296 degrees per second, which is 3.6 swings per second, which is... A stack size of 4 could keep up with the max rate of the ingots here. Hmm... Maybe I should put yellow belt here. Oh, also, what's our rate of this thing? Probably too slow. It can only consume 2.2 .2 ingots per second. And we can do 13 now. Uh, I don't see anywhere where I could squeeze the advanced assembly machines under the influence of the beacons. Uh, if I were to 
have these at negative 40% power. How many would I need? To convert all of them? Almost, uh, more than 14. What if I go full speed ahead? That is 1.3 per second. We would need 10 to consume these at full speed. Hmm. This is looking like a disastrous end to a perfect build. Oh, I should probably put something in place to drain the drain the steam as well, because infinite power supply from this, the steam turbines are never actually going to activate. Hmm. I really don't want to have to have ingots turned into plate elsewhere. This is a bit of a conundrum. How fast is this? 5.2 per second, that's almost half rate. Whenever we take ing uh, Iridium into space, we take it in the form of ingots. So what's the rate of... what's the rate that we actually need ingots on the ground? Compared to our overall need for... Iridium. Is it okay to just be able to convert almost half of it to plate? I'm thinking probably yes, because I often see that we've got plenty of plate when we're out of ingots. This is probably fine. Probably. Yeah, I think we should ship it. I think that's pretty good, actually. Alright. Plate of the Iridium variety. Iridium ingot. On this side, please. Oh, we need to set train limit for this, don't we? Can I fit this here? I could definitely fit it up here, actually. That looks pretty good. Train limit iridium ingot. Uh, if we've got 5k, that's not right. 20 times 100. 2,000. Should probably, like, double it or something. So we have to have two train loads of ingots before a train will come. Or maybe, like, one and a half. About 3k. And that should be set to Iridium. Uh, I don't think we have to set the train limit to 3,000. Do we? No. And 
set train limit. That can just be... Why is this higher priority? I don't think that's necessary, is it? Uh, and these two can just be set to limit... of 50 stacks each, plus 40, plus 40. So we could almost store two train loads of plate here. That should be fine. Kind of like the look of that. And I think we already set our train names and requests up here correctly, didn't we? All right, that's our modernized Iridium ingot build. Assuming that we'll consume steam, I don't think that's too big of an ask, is it? Um, it's not like we've stopped consuming steam from the uranium just because we're sending power down the spell elevator, actually. Which maybe we should have, but that's not what's been happening. It's actually quite a lot of ingots. Alright, cool. Let's ship that. Get rid of these random robo-ports. I'm sort of tempted to replace the wind turbines with, like, flat solar panel 2s, just like we have in space. How much do we get on Hagen? Oh, we're here. No, we're not. We're at Foenestra. Thermodynamics facility can't be placed on land. I'm pretty sure it can if we place a uh, spaceship floor first. And since it's four times, well, effectively more than four times faster than the casting machines, um, it's going to be a lot more UPS friendly. Zaxxon? I didn't say so before. Welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Alright, make sure I've switched this off, otherwise we're going to have big trouble if this thing lands while I am in the editor. Oh yeah, what I wanted to know is what's our solar percentage on Hagen's surface? 22%. So what's 22% of... Let's just ignore the downtime for a sec. 22% of 400 kilowatts is 88, isn't it? Times 5 compared to the 4 times 20, that's 80. It's actually about the same, but allegedly... Uh, Allegedly, wind turbines are bad for UPS, somehow. For what you get out of them. I would have thought they would work kind of like a hacked solar panel. I think I just figured out why we die. Um, if I... Uh, if I forget to turn this off while I'm in the editor and we automatically land on Hagen orbit uh, and I try to come back to the spaceship, because this surface doesn't exist, we just kind of pop into existence as a character with legs here. And then when we, like, use the suicide button, we find ourselves back on Nalvis and our own gun turrets kill us. Uh, I just noticed it says force EE underscore test force underscore one. Presumably when it does force us to spawn here, it puts us on another force. Not sure why. Maybe it's because... I think I, I, think I might know the answer. Okay, what's our throughput of something reliable? Um... How about iron? We haven't had trouble with iron for a very, very long time. 
uh, iron ore. Wait. This soft filter is not helping. Um... What do you think would be the most reliable resource out of everything we have? Like the most steady across all of our graphs. What's this? Vitamelange Nugget. Don't think so. All of them are kind of wavy, actually. What about water or something? This is all of our fluids, apparently? What? Oh, I have a filter. Duh. What's that flat line there? Biomatter? Yeah, biomatter. Okay, biomatter. Biomatter is like a flat line for the last hour. Perfect, perfect. Okay, so biomatter. I meant to check this a while ago, actually. We're looking at 3.1k per minute. And if I go here and say... How do we make biomatter? We can make it in a bio lab, and that's it. Okay. Bio lab. Throw down a few of those with super speed modules. And. Uh. Cheat inputs. And delete all of it. My guess is that is not going to affect our graph. Yeah. Let's go back to Hagen. Inca. Production. Biomatter. Last hour. Nice and flat. Cool. Good to know. So the, uh, the production and consumption in the editor doesn't affect our graphs. Uranium ore, copper, sand? Oh, for candidates for things that are steady, yes. Definitely not sand. Sand has been a problem for a while. That's why we just did a stone planet. Mr. Ray Ray? Point of no return again? Wait, what? And good morning to you as well. I've got a few people with uh, name and base reward requests at the moment, actually, now that I think of it. Let me bring it up. Uh, we got three professional Dave newest base names. Yeah, I was asking Fritley what, what that means. Like, where it's supposed to be. Point of no return again. We've got Professional Dave as well for gold. And Harnad for gold. I, th I think yesterday I was trying to sort that one out. Trying to clarify if there is a Harnad already here somewhere. That I have to turn to gold. Or if that was supposed to be just name and base. Zavoxifol. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Why so many accumulators there? Because when the spellevator has a train go through it, it spikes like crazy. That's all. I still want an option to remove names? Wait, what? Empty null, welcome in. How did you switch to editor mode? I'm new. There is a mod called editor extensions. 
And if you want to have the editor parallel to your regular save, uh, what you need to do is go into settings, mod settings, and the per player tab. And then down at the bottom of the editor extensions options, it's called testing lab. And then you can just press control E to go to editor. Doing good, you? Yeah, not too bad. Not know that in the hash is the name of the base? That in the... Nope. What? I... I don't understand. Alright, um... That actually filled... Or mostly filled kind of quickly. Did I blueprint this? I think I did not get around to it just yet. Make sure the rail is all done. Looks like it is... Alright, ingot, thermo, and now we can check if the thermodynamics uh, can be, let's just say iridium, actually no, there's a few steps before this one, whoops, uh, don't forget to remove any cheat items, that looks fine. Okay, and snap two looks good. Okay, let me just grab some spaceship floor. How much would we need for this build? Uh, floor, spaceship, it's going to be 7 by 7, I mean, I guess I could calculate it, that might help, let's just multiply this by 4, 588? Two dimensions go burr. Okay, five eight eight times four. Two thousand three hundred and fifty two spaceship floor. Assuming this works. That's our premium for being able to run the bigger machines on the ground. Um, but I think it's worth it, especially how relatively easily we can make the floor these days. Let's head down the elevator. I'm Russian and don't know English well, that's okay. I get the exact information on YouTube, thank you. Okay, no worries. Um, well, I can show you without... Whoa, that looked like it was a crash. Uh, Editor Extensions is the name of the mod, but this part here, visuals will suffice. Settings. Mod Settings. Per Player Tab. And Testing Lab is here under Editor Extensions. That's the part that might be harder to find than the mod itself. I just noticed your UPS below 60, Sanj. Yeah, it's been dipping for a while. But we're working on fixing it. Oh, I forgot I didn't actually have to come to the... You know what I forgot? I, I forgot to bring a facility. We do have a laser facility here. That will suffice. To test this. Laser... Facility. So we obviously can't place this on concrete. But we can place it on spaceship floor. 
Cool, cool, cool. Wait, what? Give it back. Uh, I guess I can't just directly replace this with concrete. That's surprisingly slow. But I don't want the train from down here to take it. I've missed lurking and watching a huge Factorio base, indeed. Welcome back. It's so slow to pick up floor. Okay. Okay. Now then. Um, why do you have... Oh, packs. Up the elevator you go. Back to the mall. And... I just realized I can't jump into the editor. I'm gonna fall out of the train. It's fine. We'll just stay here for now. Now then. Spaceship floor. We need to place underneath all of these. Oh, I should just do 14 by 14, right? Yeah. Yeah, because we've got three squares. I kind of want to add some other floor here to make it look nice. What, what do we have? Whoops, whoops. Plating? Uh, what is that fancy stuff called? Black reinforced or light reinforced plate? Ooh. Does that look about right around this stuff? Yeah, the light reinforced plate will let us see the inserters, so I'm kind of a fan of that. Uh, if I try to place it over this, it's not going to let me. That's perfect. Okay. Um, but first... Oh, no but first. I can just do it like this. easy. Now, did we replace the spaceship floor? We did not. That looks kind of neat. It's kind of bright. What about the dark floor? Yeah, I think I like that better. Although this looks a bit weird. It's probably fine. How about... That concrete or stone brick down the middle of this. That actually kind of looks like it belongs. That actually looks pretty neat. More, more of this. Time flies if time flies. Time flies if time flies? Can't argue with that. Kellogg's, thank you very, very much for the eight months. Much appreciated. And welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again beautiful. Thank you. After how many hours of play did you make the city blocks? Uh, as in how long I've played this load, uh, this playthrough, or for Factorio in general? Sosik, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay. That looks pretty good to me, actually.
What's this doing here? I should do this sort of thing more often. It actually looks kind of nice. The adding of little details is an art. Yeah, I definitely like that better. Alright, blueprint again. Now that we know this is going to work. Um, iridium ingot. Plate. 86251. How did you get into space in the editor? Uh, you can't. If you mean the editor parallel to your normal save, you can't do that. You need a separate save. Just go new game. There'll be a scenario if you have the editor extensions mod. Alright. That looks pretty good to me. Uh, plus plate. And this one, slash plate, that actually was a bit more readable, I think. All right, now where should we put it? I'll have to go upstairs to get the, uh, the furnaces, basically. Well, this is not really our priority right now. I kind of got distracted. Or rather, was looking for something to do. Have we redesigned the other steps of Iridium yet? I don't think so. This is literally just this part that we redesigned. I think it was Holmium that we did redesign like that. Yeah. Give Decon Train something to do. Okay. In the in-game editor, you can put down space tiles. Yeah, but I can't do anything uh, that would let me go to another surface. I can't put down space uh, cargo rocket silos or landing pads, for example. Um, I can't put down delivery cannon, uh, delivery cannons. I can't put down anything that would let me interact with another surface. Unless we're in a save that's just basically a regular save with cheat mode on. Alright, so what's our priority right now? I'm kind of at a loss, to be honest. Let's see how our stone is doing. That's what I want to see. Uh... Okay, that's not as good as I was hoping. But the fact that it just happens to be running the moment that I look at it, in and of itself, is a pretty good sign. Um... Yeah, let's look at our sand production over the last... It's very spiky. It's actually trending down a little bit. Are we not keeping up with the core fragments? No, we have to be keeping up with the core fragments. Yeah. Uh, this is starting to look a little bit low, actually. I hope we've got ships on the way to that new outpost. Check that that's working. Where's our timer? It is negative 16k, that means a ship has been sent here, like 2,000 ticks ago, actually. 
So it's probably only just entered the webway, I mean, on its way to Foenestra. What should we focus on right now? What, also, what's missing over here? Is there like a, a ghost here? It's stone. Um, just remove those tile ghosts. Don't care. Okay. Should we make another stone outpost? I could maybe make just a regular stone, uh, regular stone mine before we do that. How big is this one? Let me just get some water while that saves. Oh wow, that's taking a while. How much does the card weigh? The card? How much does the card weigh? I'm not sure. Okay, how much is this? 512k stone. Let's go get that. Pardon me, I was still pouring my drink. It's actually kind of far away. Alright, let's use the search function entity stone and find the nearest decent. If I search it from here, that might be the better way to go. Um, find the nearest decent sized stone patch. I don't know English well, and I'm using Google Translator. Fair enough. Way is size? Yeah, I was figuring it was some kind of magnitude. Card equals map? Oh, how big is the map? Do you mean Hagen itself? The radius is... Oh, oh, like how big the save file is. Oh, that's a big one. Radius is 3.8k on Hagen. I guess I can check... Um, saves. We're up to 684. We're, we're, we're at 0. 0.684 gig on this save at the moment. Wait in memory, gigabytes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 0. 0.68 of a gig for this save file. It's, uh, it's getting up there. It will get a bit smaller once we're able to trim some more surfaces. 0.68 gig, yes, yes. Alright, that one's obviously a bit small. 19k over here. This is over half a mil. It's... oh. This is a 2.6 mil plus 0.68 mil. And it's straight down here. I think that's where we're going. Okay, cool, cool, cool. How big is your blueprint storage dot dat? Oh god. I don't know. Where do I find it? Is it under like... I don't know. Uh, tell me where to find it and maybe I'll have a look. Let's grab our uh, lazy mine blueprint. 
Where's the train stop in this? Oh, it's on the left. There we go. And... About here... Should be fine. And then... About... I could use some landfill. Now we'll need a bit of extra... Extra drills up there anyway. I don't suppose this is possible. Oh, it is. Perfect. And then up here. Nice. And straight rail all the way back to here. And here. And that should... Well, it's kind of wobbly, but I don't think I care. I'm going to need some power poles. Where are we going? Wibbly wobbly rail. There we go. Let's get our construction train down here. Construction train on a guy. Right here. And that's actually down this way. Root directory that has slash mods slash saves in it. Okay. Where where am I going? It's gonna be a little bit easier with this one if we drive the construction train manually. Rather than making a new temp stop every 12 seconds or less. Okay, so Factorio directory. Is this the right version? I've got a bunch of versions lying around. Uh, that has mods saves in it. Is it UN... INS000.dat? That can't be it, can it? Mine's a lowly 55 meg. Oh, oh, I know, I know how to give you some idea. Um, let's look on the Discord real quick. Blueprints. The last time I dropped in the SEK2 blueprint book, it was 7 meg. So this blueprint book right here is seven megabytes it's it's got quite a lot of stuff in it um like books within books within books so i think i, th I think like all of my blueprints ever that i've still got here are probably less than like 20 30 40 50 meg i would guess Your user app data roaming Factorio. I hate those central folders for everything. Go away. Just, just put things where I put the game. Bots are being weird again. I added that blueprint a few days ago. It only added 4 meg to my .dat file. It must be compressed, maybe? I was going to say something like, or oh, removes some redundancies or something, but that would just in a way, be a kind of compression anyway. Share it, please. Uh, you can see it on the Discord. It's in the Blueprints... Uh, Blueprints channel. It's been updated quite recently. We didn't bring enough prods? 
Oh no. Hurry up. We're wasting we're wasting precious tiny amounts of stone that we'll never get back. Wait for full cargo when you come back here. Alright, so these are covered. Uh, we need some more drills over here. And here, I guess. One of the nice things about doing the core fragments first is these temporary mines are going to last a lot longer. That's that was a bit short-sighted. Does this fit here? Oh, it does. Easy peasy. That should already be covered. And this can go here. And we should be able... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can get full coverage of this easily. Alright. Belt goes this way. And uh, this way. Construction train is on its way back. I really like that little unobtrusive notification sound. Uh, we don't need anything in the middle. Just over here. That looks weird. There we go. And this side as well. And once more with healing. Don't forget to connect these red wires. Oops. The purpose of which is so that we can tell when there's nothing left. We can change the uh, provide stack threshold down to one. So a train should come back and pick up the very last of the stone without us having to do it manually. There might be like a little tiny bit of stone left on the belt or something when we come to deconstruct this, but that's no big deal. Really? There we go. And that already has... Oh, right. We didn't even have to add signals because they're already built into the blueprint. Laziest mine. 10 out of 10. Let's go empty our construction train. Wait, no, no, stop, 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 stop. What are we missing here? Uh, red underground belts. Oh, I know why. We have, it's not red underground belts, it's red uh, loaders. And we have those so that we can't saturate this belt so that this thing can output. Um, I don't suppose I can hand... I can handcraft a few of those. We need... six. Oh, that's a lot of steps. Uh, shouldn't be too long, actually. Oop. Yeah, we stopped carrying red belt in the train. I could maybe upgrade... To be really lazy, I could maybe upgrade the blueprint so that instead of blue belt, we use... Well, let's make a copy before I do this. How about we call it really 
lazy mine with beacon. So first thing we're going to do is upgrade blue belt to purple. And I'm going to have to make... Whoops. I'm going to have to make another upgrade planner for this. Uh, red loader becomes blue loader. Because these are the two tiers of... These are the two tiers of belt that we're carrying these days. 45 or 90 per second. Upgrade items. There it is. Cool. Purple and blue belt. Or rather purple belt and blue loaders for these two. For this version. Nice suit. And that's going to be a lot easier to deal with in the future. We're not going to have to handcraft this stuff or have the train make another trip or something. And is that all that was missing? Oh. Notification speaker. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's only while we were still testing it. Yeah, it's not connected in a way that if it's not there it'll cause problems, right? It's just a little extra wire. Yeah, we can we can ignore that. Cool, cool, cool. So that's our 2.6, 3.2-ish times, uh, where is it, times 1.9, holy crap. So about 6.8, uh, 6.08 million stone. That should keep things going for a little while. And I think there's already some trains queued up to come and get the stone. Yeah, we've got two train loads at least. It might even... No, I don't think this is going to be fast enough to cause traffic problems here. 58 per second overall. It's a bit more than one stack per second. Which is a bit more than we're getting out of all of our core fragments. if we ignore everything that we get out of the regular core fragments that come out of it. So now we just, out from our efforts today and towards the end of yesterday, we've got another 100 stone per second, at least for a while. Well, we've got 50 stone per second indefinitely, and we've got over 100 stone per second for a while. And now we've got three, three trains leaving with... Um, with stone. Maybe I should have put more signals here. Uh, that's probably fine. Sub Sublimal, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. That reminds me, I need to... I need to go around giving these trains batteries, the ones on the surface anyway. Apparently it's night time right now. It's not night time. Why were we not getting maximum acceleration from those trains? Hmm. Does that mean our trains are going to be even faster once we give them the batteries? Construction bots have no storage upgrade. Like cargo, like logi bots. Do they not pick up three things sometimes? That's a good question, actually. Let's put exactly three... No, better idea. Let's put exactly four stone in here. Disable our RoboPort. Mark that for decon. And we... Whoops. I see one construction bot taking stone and one taking the chest. Do you think that's not... One bot?
think it was only one bot. What if I put only two bots in here, in this specific robo port, the nearest one, and a little bit of stone in here. What's our, what's our upgrade thingy? Our bonuses. Cargo capacity plus three, so one bot should be able to carry four, right? So we should see exactly two bots coming to carry stone and one bot carrying steel chest. And because we've only got two bots in here, construction bots, we might be able to see it happen. Yeah, there it is. One, two, three. Construction bots do get uh, cargo upgrades. Debug option showing bots could help. Um, how so? I mean like this? That looks kind of cool. What else was I going to do? How fast can our sand machine go? Uh, it can basically consume all of the stone that we've added today. and But it can spit out 380 sand per second. I don't think we need quite that much. Maybe I'm wrong, actually. Because this thing is not saturating. Maybe we should go for another temp stone mine. The thing is, every second I spend on this, I could be spending on going and getting another stone core fragment planet, right? Um, what do we have in that regard? And then we, you know, would never have to do it again. After some point. Let's see. Tigris. We marked this as a candidate at some point. Delta V from Hagen is 53k. Radius smallish. I think this is probably. It's in the Aphora system? Or is that a planet? Was that a moon? Uh, it is a planet, parent a forest. 55k, was it? I'm pretty sure that's far enough that it's worth going via the... via Foenestra. It's also relatively small and far from the interstellar map. I don't think we have any reason to go there at this point. I did only give it, like, five on the... Like, that, that's kind of a maybe. Um, we've already got Toucan. That's the only one that looks like it's really close to the anomaly. Um, we've got one with, like, the same radius. And a bit further in... Magmin is in the Electra system. Here it is. Magmin. That's not bad. That's not too bad. It does add, like, maybe a minute of travel time, if that. Or we could just you know, do some more zone discovery. Um, because of the way the cost goes up each time, we're actually up to 106 Astro Science Packs 1 to do zone discovery. But we could do targeted for only 64, although that's also 64 Pack 2s. You know what? I really do want to find the final, well, hopefully the final stone source that we need. Uh, what am I doing? I'm looking for the option. Uh, zone discovery. Here we go. 
we're looking for stone. And then targeted zone discovery. Away it goes. Please tell me we at least got some... Nope. Oh, we did, we did. Vitalic reagent. Products finished 241, products finished 243. It's like identical. Because it's a really slow recipe? No, it's not. Probably because purple belts are just that fast. And we're looking for 4.8 extract per second. Um, but yeah, well, if we average like 240-something each times 24, uh, it looks like we have had a trainload of Vitalik Reagent going upstairs. Which means it's probably not here, it's probably already... Whoops. Well, that is indeed a trainload of Vitalik Reagent. Um... Bench, Bench Kobo, Bench Kobo, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. So the next time there's a train load of uh, Vitalik Reagent, it's going to get delivered over here. Um, is it going to sort itself out? I think it is. We're going to get 100 stacks in here, minus like a tiny bit. And then this is going to get picked up first. Yeah, it, it should work itself out. 50 UPS, that is painful. 50 is not that bad. It's not like we're playing a first person shooter or something. The inconsistency, though, is a little bit jarring. Oh, we got some planets. Sakimi. Sakimi is 7.5k radius. Uh, it looks like it's close to the sun. We're not looking for that. Tanius. Where is Tanius? I should have looked at how far away it is. Tanius does not ring a bell. So it's probably far away. Here it is. Um... What was the name of it? Sakimi. Yeah, it's really close to the sun, which means all of that distance is getting added to our journey. No, oh, thank you. We've got Via Terra. Which, ooh, 9.9k radius. It's kind of close to the sun, though. It's in the Capella system. We're already in the Capella system, aren't we? Didn't we just go there? Yeah, this is already where we're going for our stone. Not that we gain anything from it being in the same system, because we're not using energy beaming to power our outposts. Um, but yeah. We could go there for, for our stone. I'd really rather... Keep the spaceship journeys as short as possible, though. We can keep looking. Asteroid Belt 1. Why? Anchorous Asteroid Belt 1. Why is that giving us... Because it's mostly stone. Okay. I want the core fragments, though. What else you got? Swan? Uh, it's tiny. And it's relatively close to the sun. Not interested in that today. Why don't I update the blue circuit build while that's cooking? Um, let's jump into the editor. I could have sworn I did update this build already. Oh, I've already blueprinted this, but I want to, like, edit it. 
Uh, apart from squeezing these closer together and getting rid of the second set of pipes, it's going to be like the exact same shape for several builds, so I want to leave that there for now. Even though having a few more signals lying around, even though it's on a different surface, is going to make placing signals and removing them that little bit slower. I should probably hurry up and decon a bunch of this old stuff in that case. That was a monument of a build. All that bio stuff in one place. Definitely could have made some improvements to it before we shipped it, but um... I mean, kind of would have had to redesign some of it from scratch. Maybe visit some random system and send satellites for quick system discovery? That's going to be a lot more effort, actually. Uh, I don't know which planet we just discovered, because I was in the editor. Um, it just doesn't show... We didn't miss discovering it, we, we confirmed this, but it just doesn't show the notification. So I'm going to search stone... planets... What do we got? I really want to see something like Toucan. Large radius, tiny, tiny solar percentage. Impetus is pretty good, but I, I really do want the bigger radius so that we can minimize the size of the area when we trim it. It's really not helpful for the save file size when we um, when we have to cover a lot more space to use core mining on a planet. What do we just get? Hybris. Hybris. That's too small. That is not what we're looking for right now. What kind of radius do we have here? Via Terra is almost perfect. It's just... It's just that bit... It's just a little bit further for our ships. Delta V from where we are is... It's about 3,700 further. So, like, if it if the distance to Foenestra was 1,370 instead of 10,000. Oh, sorry, 13,070 instead of 10,000. It's not exactly, like, 30% further for a round trip. Probably, like, 15 to 20. Anson? Uh, radius is okay. Solar is really good. So we've got... Oh, that's uranium. I still haven't done uranium. So we've got two can, And then we've got a couple of smaller ones. Like, ironically, the smaller the planet, the more area that we're going to have left if we go for a certain amount of throughput and then trim it. So bigger is smaller. I also want to look at coal candidates. I might do that while it's researching. Uh, we've only got a few so far. 7% solar, that's too small. Um, they're all kind of small, actually. I think after this one, after a few researches here, we'll maybe look at coal as well. Okay. Ooh. So we are getting Vitalik Reagent. Uh, 
bit by bit. Not enough to send it upstairs yet. Maybe I should look at some other resources for Zone Disco uh, like in the Universe Explorer. We don't... we probably never have to worry about copper, because we've got a huge one next door. Um... Yeah. Ten... ten now. Ten now. Ten now? 4.8k radius. Not interesting. Unfortunate. We're definitely not worried about Imosite Cave. Uh, our, like, smaller, like, our first outpost on this tiny little moon is giving us way more Imosite than we need really, really easily. Don't think we ever need to make another outpost for that, probably. Iron is... Ooh, that one's pretty decent. Almost 9k radius. Solar is 25%. Alternatively, I could do some smaller ones with 7%. What's more important? Reducing the spaceship trip time? Or having a smaller trimmed surface when we're done. Because if I loosen up on that requirement just a little bit, then we've already got a couple of really, really good candidates for stone. 7% solar is as low as it gets, it seems. And we've got like 5k radius on two of them that we haven't been to yet. Buchan is only 6.85. So that so the outpost would probably be a little bit bigger than Toucan. To get 98 per second. Worth considering. What do we get? Cla Claustri? Claustri. That's tiny. I think we're going to be stuck with a really big save, honestly. Ru Rutadam? That's also pretty small. If uh, this one doesn't give us our stone, I think we'll just go for the 5 point something K radius ones. And I want to start looking for some coal as well. Oh, Factorio prints. I haven't used that in a while. That's some older stuff. You can find uh, most of the blueprints on the Discord. Should probably make a note of that in the command. Okay. What other resources? Vulcanite. Vulcanite has been really, really easy to keep up with um, from a 2,000 radius moon. I think we put core drills literally all over the planet. But we haven't felt a shortage of Vulcanite in a really, really long time. Or pretty much ever. Ever since we came to this planet, unless we had fuel problems on the planet or something. I don't... we definitely don't need to be shopping for Vulcanite just yet. Um, but I'm thinking... I'm thinking a 5k radius planet uh, with 7% solar is might be good enough. Might be just fine. What other resources? We haven't done infinite uranium yet. We probably should. Uh, this one's 4k radius, 7%. I don't think we have to be that fast on uranium. 
most likely. 10k radius, but it's clo it's a lot closer to the sun. Hmm. Is our science stalled? Oh, it is. What are we short on? Astro 1? What? It's been years since we had to... think about Astro 1. Oh, it's literally the rate of production. Because we don't... Uh, for the moment, we don't allow a lot to accumulate. Relatively. Uh, okay. We can go put some speed modules in this, at least. Actually, I should be able to get the construction train to do that. Now, hurry and put in... server. Speed modules. And... Go. Just in time. Where are you going? Oh, right. The signals I forgot about. Why don't you visit the other science labs while you're at it? What? No, don't mess with the UI. And then this one? Uh, I'd better hurry up and put in put in the request here. There we go. And this one and this one. Which already has them, actually. Alright. Construction train. That should be all we need, actually. Cool. Should I, or should I not, allow a lot more science packs to accumulate? I have a feeling I could crash my economy pretty quick at the moment, if I did that. Alright, well, we're obviously not getting zone discovery to happen super fast for a minute. In that case... We looked at Ratadam, right? Wait, what's it called? R-U-T-A-D-A-M. Yeah, 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 it's too small. Okay. Hmm. What are these... Uh, what are their Delta V from Hagen? This one's only 17... Oh yeah, weren't we going to go to Hermes? This one's actually really close. Like, closer than if we went via Foenestra to somewhere. And I completely forgot that we had scanned this place. Um, because we were going to clear the biters. Because we wanted to get uranium from here. Should we risk using the energy beam? Uh, do we even have an energy beam here? It's not that far. We could use the beam from Calidus. I'm thinking I should just... Uh, maybe I should wait and use an extinction ball or something. How's our beaming of Nalvis going? Pretty well, actually. I might need to start scanning it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we need to scan Nalvis. So we can keep clearing the biters and eventually um, trim the surface of Nalvis. Once I can declare extinction, uh, I'm going to head over to Nalvis and 
disassemble all of this. It's going to take a while. We're going to... We'll just move the names if we have to. Probably not. It'll be close to the... Uh, wait, this is actually the center of Nalvis right here, right? Maybe I'll make an exception to the space elevator at zero, zero rule. Just so we don't have to destroy the old spaceship. Um, but I guess we can keep the old names here. Um, but yeah, we're going to decon all of this crap. That's going to be good for UPS. And like other outposts, we're just going to have a bunch of core drills. Um, so where should we focus on? Maybe I should just go update Gibble. You know what? It's about time. I kind of want to do that. Alright, we're going to need some big batteries. Fantastic. Nalvis has 0% biters? Uh, no, we need to clear all the biters from Nalvis, and then we can click this button right here. Um, and it'll change its threat percentage to 0, which means that if we, like, trim the surface, it's not going to spawn biters in the area that we've gotten rid of the generated terrain. Euroscript, welcome in. Alright, so we've got plenty of that. Get this out of my inventory for now, please. Um, don't need purple belt right now. Don't need this. Wait, no, I was going to use you as a taxi. Come back. Oh, I missed it. I was a little too scared of getting squished. And for some reason I still have these green tech cards on my person. Let's go drop them. Actually, they've got a little progress bar here. Are they going to not stack with these? They are. That should be fine. Here's another thing I need to update. Okay. Let's head over to our spaceship. I was looking for somewhere I could drop this off to go back to the mall, but I can wait, I guess. Back to the construction ship, to be precise. Boop -a doop Yeah, another asteroid belt? No. Bad. No asteroid belts. There are zero core fragments of ast on asteroid belts. I'm not interested in having to make temporary mines in remote locations. Okay, what was it called again? Gibil. So Gibil and Granis are the only outposts that I haven't uh, cleared out the old crap, unless you count Nalvis. And there's sort of some old crap at Muir, but this was our prototype for uh, nothing but core fragments. So it's kind of similar. It's going to be a bit of a tedious process to update this. I might do it off stream. But yeah, that's why we've got like a six point a 0.68 gig save file, because we've got a few planets that are fully explored or close to it that don't necessarily need to be right now. Should I energy beam Hermes? Or do we need to worry about beaming Brontion Burbulator? 
Ooh, wait, I have an idea. I, I have an idea. Um, no, I don't. I was going to say, if I have a, um, what is it called? An umbrella on that planet. It's not going to protect against my own energy beam, is it? And we know the answer's no, because this thing is not protecting from, uh, from our own energy beam already. That would have been convenient, though. Even if I do use energy beam, it's going to take a really long time to clear Hermes. Maybe I should just find another place as a uranium outpost. I could use an army of Spidertrons, but lasers are really, really bad. Like, personal lasers that we can put in the Spidertrons are really bad in this. They consume way too much power to be useful. And having to resupply them with rockets... It's gonna take a lot of rockets. Um, the tank is pretty crappy as well. Actually, let me just look at... Gibil Orbit. And I want to find coordinates zero zero. Right about here. And I'm hoping we'll be able to place our usual well, we'll make it happen anyway. Place our usual outpost. Where's the... There it is. Right about here. There's something in the way downstairs, apparently. Whoops. Gibbel, where is... There it is. There's zero, zero. It's just rocks. Let's pick a dollies them out of the way. Should have done this ages ago. Especially at such a short distance from our from our uh, main base. If I mess something up, if I forget something, it's very easy to fix. All right. You build cannot place. Wait, what did it say? Cannot place the matching space elevator structure on opposite surface. Okay, I think that just means there's a rock in the way. Uh, I don't see one though. Oh, it's this one. I think we've got it now. Fantastic. Plague rockets? Yeah, they're actually really far away. Plague rocket. We need bio four. I need a, I need to do another four data cards for bioscience for that. And well, we've already got the vit core fragments, and I need to make vitalic epoxy, which I think is just one more step. We can make that on the ground, and we've got all the ingredients. That would be a pretty straightforward build. Um, so we need Vitalik Epoxy and... Let's see. Catalog 4. Comparative genetic data. I'm pretty sure I've already done the build for that here. I have. Uh, decompression resistance data. Neural anomaly data and radiation data. So, we would need to make four builds to get Bio 4 done. That's not as bad as I thought, actually. But we've... S Ooh. I was going to say we've probably still got some serious material. Holy crap, there's... Suddenly experimental biomass everywhere. That's kind of good. Um... 
All right. We we have we have stuff. Maybe I'll do bio four after we sort out this outpost. Slip second. Good to see you again. Immo, we go, data gnome, everyone coming in. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Let's grab ourselves some scaffolding and turn off our bots because they will not be doing this very efficiently. Um, and cost a lot of energy. Uh, but yeah, I kind of uh, didn't realize how much closer Bioscience 4 is. That kind of changes things. Maybe... Maybe we will uh, plague rocket that planet. Ooh, perfect. Mr. Ray Ray? Thought I saw you before, actually, but good to see you again. What are we bonking for? Up we go. Close enough, I'll get the bots to finish off the tiny little bits that I miss. Just a little bit more on this side. Oop. I know the build for, uh, what was it called? Reagent is has been very slow lately. I kind of want to change how this works as well. I'm pretty sure what keeps happen- oh, I know what keeps happening actually. I can't really change that. Unless I put in copious storage here somewhere. Or if I like allow this one to fill up and then push it to the front like we do in other places, that might be the way to go, actually, because we end up with lots of extract in here. Hmm. But yeah, I think what keeps happening is condition is met for train limit to be greater than zero. Train is scheduled, but also the non-LTN train comes and steals all of it. So then we've got an LTN train waiting for a whole other train load. Maybe I should have done a separate pickup. I guess I have room. I could do like here and here. Or LTN slash non-LTN trains for different pickups. I really wish I had a more elegant way to make it just work for both. Oh well. Let's continue. Get ahead of Iridium as well by fixing up this outpost before we have more of a demand for it later on. Name in base? Oh yeah, I still have some more of those to place. Um... Let me just set up some bot stuff here. While we do that. Okay, name in base. Kind of got distracted earlier. Let's do the ones that are unambiguous. We've got Professional Dave and Upgrade to Gold. P. Dave. Okay. Easy. P. Dave goes here. Fantastic. Um, Arnad? I'm pretty sure... Oh. Oh, I did add it. 
Wait, 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 was that... You know what? Since I'm in doubt, I'm just gonna say yes, upgrade to gold, that's legit. Britley? I still don't know what you mean by newest base names question mark. Point of no return again, Mr. Ray Ray. Don't know what you mean by that either. And Yuri script. I'm just going to add those. Okay, Fritley. Right about here. And Mr. Ray Ray. Should probably start adding some over here. Well, we'll do this one first. And the Yuri script. Seems good. You could tell LTN to only come if there are four train loads worth. Yeah, it's a little bit of a waste. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can do that. Um, that's not that much of a problem. But I, if I want to prioritize LTN over the vanilla trains, there isn't a way to do it. Because the only way to stop the vanilla train... Well... The, the only reasonable way to stop the vanilla train is to control the train limit, but that applies to the LTN trains as well. Okay. The bots haven't done as much as I expected them to. Uh, let's just pick this up. Oops. Don't try to fly through the spaceship. Alright. Gimme scuff. There's not that much to place. Maybe I'll count on the bots to do it. I guess I can give him a hand at the very least. Alright, they can do the tricky bits. That's what they're good at. some more this. We should need almost all of it because it's measured for the outpost. Uh, we should probably pick up our bots. There we go. And wait for them to recharge, I guess. Come on, I could have done this myself by now. That, now you're just... Okay, I see how it is. Malicious compliance. Alright, I think we've got all of our floor placed. So this is going to be... Erudite... Four fragments. We can copy paste this part now. Oh, apparently I picked up way more plating than I need. Give me those solar panels.
Oh, we've actually got good reach. I can just stand in the middle. Although, it does make the bots... Not as quick, um, if we give them more range. But with solar panels, they don't have that many things to place. It's fine. I think we've given these bots long enough to place all those solos. Give me some accumulators also. Out of Roboport juice again. Maybe I should just place them myself. Okay. Nah, the bots can do it faster. I thought they were gonna... There we, there we go, I was like one second off with my guess. Solar panels. Make sure we send power down the elevator. Oh, I'm really looking forward to getting all rid of all the cargo rockets. I should have done this sooner. I didn't realize how excited I'd be about it. Maybe finish get rid of, getting rid of all but one outpost by the time we finish today. What? Two accumulators short. Really? No, they're in my in. Oh, the bots are sleeping. Freaking layabouts. Give me these. Actually, we need another stack of those. These, and these, and these, and these, and these. Um, and these, and these, and these. And these. Also these. Give me the batteries. Give me the Logibots. We'll figure out what else. I need space belt. And I need lamps. And I need space rail. And the bulk rail loader is there, believe it or not. Or unloader, sorry. Bulk rail unloader. Ammo. Forgot the space belt again. I think my inventory was full anyway. Space rail. Uh, we need some tiny requester chests. Where are those? Apparently, amongst all that, I didn't pick up the regular space belt. What are we missing right now? Lights, belt, uh, one, two, three more unloaders, actually. Two recharges. Belt, lights. That's looking a bit full. Let's chuck our batteries in here. Fantastic. We need a clamp. Still need the unloaders. And a single superior filter inserter. Let me in.
Let me in. Alright, is that everything? Looking good. Now we just need to change everything to Core Fragment Iridite. We've done all the hidden ones. Everything else should somewhat jump out at us. Don't need these, don't need these. <gasps> I think I forgot something. In the last outpost. Oh wait, no. Well, let's check. Yeah, we're no longer sending any signal into the signal transmitter from up here. Which means this is not necessary. But there's no storage for that. Um, so I'm pretty sure I did set up the last outpost properly, actually. Cool, cool, cool. How are we doing for stone core fragments back at home? That's all working, yes. That's not looking so good. Do we have ships on the way home with stone? Oh, let's check that we don't have any... Oh! Literally just landed. But I was going to say, let's make sure we don't have any stuck in space trying to drop off stone with the wrong... No, you can't be serious. Uh, that bug that we thought we fixed, apparently we just made it a thousand times rarer. Unless that ship has been there since before we did that, but I don't think that's true. What's your destination? Vegan orbit, which means you haven't been given a destination. You launched while the bots were trying to empty out your core fragments and load you up. That shouldn't... those two things shouldn't happen at the same time. But we can clearly see that right here. There are still core fragments in the ship. We caught some bots that got kidnapped trying to deliver space elevator cable into the buffer warehouse the only other the yeah 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 I know um the only other container down here that can hold space elevator cable is a dedicated storage chest um gets dropped off here goes into purple chest comes over here that's it so there isn't anywhere that, like, there's no requester chest looking for space elevator cables, right? So if there's a bot here with space elevator cables, it means it was in the middle of delivering it from here to here. Which, oh, I've been over this a thousand times, it shouldn't be possible. See how... See how our ship was emptied out before we send a signal to say the ship is ready and then something gets put on this memory cell and then we start putting in spellevator cables? Assuming the outpost is looking for more spellevator cables at the time. Like... There should be... I've thought this through many times. I come to the same conclusion every time. And I thought we fixed it by not letting the ships land until there's plenty of room to empty... empty their cargo. We don't let the ship land until it can be emptied all at once. The bots remove the core fragments 
because requester chests take from buffer chests. Uh, we wait until four fragment vitamelange, according to the robot network, is zero, which should mean there are no core fragments left in the ship. But bots like to report negative numbers when they're flying around, and there's nothing I can do about that. It's very annoying. Um, but that's that's one out of four conditions that need to be met. Um, there's also, we need to have enough water and we need to have enough ion stream. That takes a few seconds, because only this pump can put the ion stream in. Until we have 39,000 out of a possible 40k in these. So it's not like there's a way for this to launch immediately. Um, and it wouldn't be almost empty if it did somehow launch immediately like that. So... The other condition, other than this reporting zero core fragments, according to the robot network, which doesn't know what's in the requester chests, is the bots have to have stopped moving as well. And we need to have enough water and ion stream. And then, and only then, do we even tell Central that we've got a ship ready. And only after we tell Central that we've got a ship ready, can we receive something through here. If there's something on the memory cell back at Central, um... Oh, I think I may have figured out how we end up sending multiple ships at once. No. No, I didn't. Never mind. Um, but yeah, basically this has to be reporting true to receive anything from here. The memory cell at Central will get passed into this. That's going to include, like, how many space elevator cables we're looking for. So, it really should be impossible to have core fragments sitting in the ship by the time... Where is it? Is it this one? Where'd that, where'd that ship go? Don't tell me it fixed itself somehow. Nope, here it is. It's got no destination. Um, like, it's got 1.1k moon orbit, which I believe is verb T. Un unless it's taken orbit on the memory cell. That's the wrong ship again. It's got its space elevators, cables, and it's got its uranium fuel cells on the memory cell, so that we can put it in here. And how the hell did it launch without the spaceship console itself having a destination updated? The destination gets updated... Um, it's on the green wire, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This green wire right here. It's either one tick after there's a destination on the memory cell. We receive the immediate destination of anomaly. Or if we're not going via the anomaly... Everything gets passed through here, with the exclusion of these signals. Um, that goes to the spaceship console. I don't know why we have to remove these from the spaceship console. Anyway. So, like, once we've got a destination, at most, 
one, two, three ticks, like three or four ticks later, the spaceship should have its destination. And then if we're receiving anything from this and spaceship is ready, start the countdown five seconds. Five seconds before we output spaceship launch to here. And we lose the we lose the count. Um if there is a single moment where we don't get green signal four, as in spaceship not reporting empty. Bots are moving, there's not max water, or there's not max uh, ion stream. If any of those conditions report negative for just a moment, the countdown has to be reset. That's just a pulse generator right there, it turns a constant signal into an into a momentary one and we remove this stuff and that goes to the memory cell so that's like there's no reason to even think about this because every time it does go bad there is stuff on the memory cell somehow we're getting stuff on the memory cell but there's no destination for the ship like, the destination hasn't changed, so the destination is Hagen Orbit, so it's not landing because it doesn't have a... There's no landing point that's actually anchored to target left clamp 1 here. It takes fewer ticks. Maximum 1, 2, 3... And we can ignore if this takes an extra tick. Compared to like... One... Two? Oh, never mind. One... Two. Okay, so if the ship somehow launched for no reason... On the exact tick... Where the memory cell is going to receive something, but the console is not. Except there's no way it should have received a launch signal by then. We have to have a signal of some kind here, or... We, we have to have a signal coming from here, and all four green signals have to be met. For five seconds... before we send the launch signal. I would have figured it out a long time ago, and it would make sense if there was a launch signal somehow on the memory cell, but that's not what's happening. Besides which, we're not sending the memory cell information uh, to the console. Apparently we are, actually, because distance signal is negative one. Wait. Distance signal negative one. Huh? I wish I could see the exact number of our destination there. Oh no, we, we know, because we've got time 20 on that signal. That means it's, uh, what, this outpost? Time 15. It's the Vitamelange one that it was supposed to be. Which is Moon Orbit 1170. That's Moss Garden. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. I thought we fixed this somehow by... 
by making the ships wait until they would get fully emptied. Before they're allowed to land. But apparently it just went from rare to super rare. And it still makes zero sense. What was the problem again? Very rarely a ship will launch before it's had all of its core fragments taken out. Uh, while it's already been given stuff on the memory cell, but somehow the spaceship console hasn't been given its destination. Uh, and the bots are still... Usually the bots are still unloading core fragments. I've been over this a number of times. My, my opinion doesn't change. Every single time I step through it and it's like, no, that shouldn't be happening. That there should be no way. There's no way for a launch signal to be sent to it. Like, the launch signal has to arrive at least five seconds after... after any of this. None of it makes sense. There is a fix that I can implement, and I've been wanting to not do that, because it's really... it's kind of dodgy, and it really shouldn't be necessary. But basically, I'm going to have to make a drop-off that can accept any uh, any type of core fragment. Um, and we'll have some kind of bot system for loading the core fragments into the train after LTN. Well, we're not even using LTN for the core fragments, though. I would have to have, like... I would have to have a vanilla train drop-off for every possible type of core fragment. That's why I haven't done it. The launch control needs to chill out and take life more slowly? That's why we've got these combinators here. It makes it wait five arbitrary seconds. After everything should already be good to go. Watch, watch, watch. Okay. There's... No more core fragments. The bots are still moving. Oh, there it is. And go. Didn't have to load any cables this time. It waited until five seconds after the last bot had stopped moving. Even though it already had enough fuel and everything. doing exactly what it was designed to do. Where is the ship? That's not the one. Which one was it? We're trying to drop off Vit core fragments. We should have room. I, I can just drop it in here as soon as... Actually, I can't remember if this will cause a problem. As soon as this ship launches, we won't have another ship automatically land here until Vit core fragments in the blue chests drop below I don't know how much. Um, so we'll have a window to manually anchor this here. Maybe 10 seconds so everyone has a more relaxed time of it. I, I don't think it's the amount of time that matters, though, because... Because, like, two ticks or something. No, less than that. Let's see. Literally zero ticks into this timer. The destination should already have been sent to the console. Like, this thing right here says if anything greater than zero, output spaceship launch one. That starts our timer that only works if all four of these conditions are met, and it'll reset if, those, if any of those conditions are not met. 
So, like, we've got a destination, and that green wire there is already sending it to the console. When that detects something, then we start the timer, potentially. And then it's five seconds on top of that, under ideal circumstances. There should be absolutely no way that this thing ends up launching with no destination on the console. It, it just shouldn't happen. And it shouldn't happen while there's still core fragments here. We certainly shouldn't be, like, receiving a request for... There's no way the ship came back with Spellvader Cable. No, even if it did, we wouldn't have had bots kidnapped that were flying that were holding onto Space Elevator Cable. So that means there had to be... And we saw it on the memory cell, there was a request for Space Elevator Cable uh, in the buffer storehouse. The only thing I can think of... What if... What if instead of... Okay, so we know this right here is sketchy, right? Uh, Vita Melange core fragments, according to the robot network, equals zero. It doesn't read the requester chests, it only reads the buffer chests. Well, it also reads these, but those are not going to have Vit core fragments because they're filtered. And they're not requesting anything. Um, anyway. We wait until all the bots have stopped moving and the report on Vit core fragments is zero. The problem with this is the bots can report negative numbers of what they're moving around. So... By fluke, they can report negative, like, net zero core fragments when there's still core fragments in here. Uh, again, that condition should have to report true for five straight seconds before this sends a launch signal. But let's ignore that for a sec. What if instead of having the timer here... Uh, I mean, I could maybe still have a timer here, just to be safe, uh, and it would be, make it easier to patch it, because I'm not messing with all of this and maybe making a mistake. But if I were to set it up so that we have a timer here, this has to be true for five seconds. Core fragment report has to be exactly zero for five seconds before we ever get the ship ready signal to report. And then maybe we could massively reduce, if not remove, the timer here. Well, actually, we should probably at least have some timer there to make sure the bots have finished giving it spellvator cable and uranium fuel cells. Well, what? It's happening right now. Look, consistently. There are core fragments left in here. It is reporting green. So. That wasn't like a random little flicker. That was kind of consistent. I still don't know how the ship could possibly launch before it receives a destination, but it seems like if we've got 10, well, let's say we've got 40 core fragments here, and we've got plenty of room to store the core fragments, and we've got 10 bots on the way to pick up the core fragments, I'm pretty sure the bots 
while they are on their way to pick this stuff up, consistently report negative core fragments so that that evens out to zero. So, from the very moment that the last core fragment, it might even be worse than that, like the bots are about to recharge and then come back and pick that up. From the very moment that the core fragment has been claimed, the robot network is reporting as if it's not there. Hmm... I think we should shift the timer. I, I still don't know how it's launching before the computer gets a destination, the console. But... Wait, is this the one that I, like, manually landed? No, it already left, right? It should already be back in circulation. Unless it's stuck in space here. It doesn't look like it. That's not Vit. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that did get it back in circulation. Okay, so... Uh... We can maybe have a little timer here, but if we shift this timer to here... And I hate to say it, but we might have to wait like 10 seconds... ...after we start getting a report that there's zero VIT core fragments... ...to make sure there's no more bots... That have that haven't actually taken the core fragments away, they've just dibsed them. It still doesn't make sense though, because this signal right here, if there is a single bot in flight, will report no green signal. I really can't make sense of it. I could do something far less sophisticated and simply, or just add it to this, like count. We've already set it up so that the ship has to be able to completely empty itself before it lands, but um, it's about to launch. If we set it up so that it can't possibly send a ready signal until the ship has been here for X seconds. That could be our condition to say that the core fragments have been emptied. I hate it, but... Maybe it's necessary. X is total logi and Y is stored logi? Uh, X is available and Y is total, yeah. So, if X is equal to Y, if all Logibots are available, we can say that the Logibots are not moving. And you can see right now, it's not reporting a green signal. I really want to see if... Okay, wait, 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 wait. Pause it. How many have we got left? I want to put it in slow-mo. Jump into the editor. And... Set it down to minimum speed. And that should affect our normal game. Fantastic. Unfortunately, it affects the frame rate as well. Okay, so we should be able to see... This is now reporting green even though bots are moving. Uh, but this one is not reporting green. Maybe... Oh, okay, wait, wait, wait. 
This might not be enough to explain it all, but... Hold on, there are definitely bots move. Okay, okay. When they're on their way back, that are counted as available. That's probably fine. Yeah, that's 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 fine. But if there is a single tick where these two report true at the same time, that would report the ship is ready. So if there's a bit of It's not going to report a Logibot as being available if it's just, like, on its way to pick up a core fragment, surely. Let me put it back on normal speed. This is a bit clunky. Even if it is a single tick, that would be negated by five second buffer. Yeah, it really would. Let me scroll up in case I missed something. Quite a lot, actually. I've been thinking hard. Is there a roboport on the ship? There is not. What was the problem again? Yeah, we've been talking about that. Can you have a combinator that is standalone from other logic on the spaceship that only allows the go-ahead signal to pass? through the console if all is okay. Uh, the way we're measuring if all is okay, there's nothing that I could do on the ship that would be unique there. The launch control needs to chill out, indeed. Uh, a bot jumped in and dropped off fuel or cable about two seconds before launch. As in, after it was given the launch signal? Albion line. Captain Tree, if I didn't say so, good to see you again. Why not set the robot timer higher then? Yeah, that's what I'm considering, one thing I'm considering. But you are checking if bots stopped moving right, then the core, the zero core fragment count should be legit. Yeah, it should. Make sure that all bots have to be in dock before the ship can start. That is part of the logic already, yes. Want to increase the activity timer up? I could, but I don't want to bottleneck our ships based on that arbitrary thing too much. I would only do the other logic if bots stopped moving. That might be a good idea. X is total logi and Y is stored. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's total versus active. Even if it is a single tick, that would be negated by the five seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel like I was close to... something that might prevent... The trouble is, no matter how many times I think it over, I can't come up with a scenario where... the memory cell, the red wire, receives destination and stuff before the green wire well no I, I can um, this happens like this happens in a couple of ticks and this uh, potentially hang on one two one two they should be the same time yeah that hold on that goes through Pulse generator, and then this one. Two combinators after this wire. And this goes... One combinator after this wire. And this goes... Two combinators after this wire. It's never been the ships that go via Foe and Estra, right? Is that correct? I don't think we've seen it happen with a ship that goes via Fo and Estra. That one tick difference could be relevant. It's 
something to look out for if we see it again. Um, yeah, I think all of them have been local, which means it has to go through this tick as well. If anomaly equals zero, output everything, and then remove these signals, that's one more tick. But this <laughs> for the thousandth time, there should be no way that this is receiving a launch signal when when these two are racing to to put this information on the memory cell and straight to the console. Makes negative sense. The spaceship console only updates every one second. But we've got five seconds of extra wait time here, so that shouldn't matter. In fact, the spaceship console has to update if it's going to launch. We can't, like, miss sending it this information because we sent it launch information. Unless there's a bug with the spaceships. And these are all inputs, so this doesn't matter. No sense was made that day. I'm not clear, are the outposts pulling ships, or is the base pushing them? Um, so basically, the outposts... Uh, under certain conditions, report to Central. Uh, and then Central just remembers the first thing it hears, waits for a ship to be ready, and depending on, like, the first ship that we know is ready, sends a signal through one of these uh, to tell this ship to launch to go to that outpost. And the outposts bottleneck themselves... Uh, to like one per five minutes for most outposts and uh, and central ignores them if they've got less than 9,000 ore fragments. That's pretty much it. Why not upgrade the roboport so they don't spend time at the charger? Um... I don't know if that helps. I don't think we have advanced roboports anyway. They're surprisingly far in. Material 3, Energy 3, Advanced Tech Card is hidden behind uh, Bio 3, which technically we've got, but I don't think we have the... Wait, what? Advanced Tech Card. 3, 3, 3, and 3. We've technically got that already. But, uh, I don't think we have the catalogs yet. Nope, we are still, still waiting for that first Vitalik reagent to go upstairs. Or the second train load, technically. But to automatically deliver it. Um, it's one more train load. Oh, no, it has been picked up. I bet I know where it went. Uh, no? Where did it go? What else is asking for reagents? What? Okay, did, did you already eat all of the reagents? Products finished. Oh yeah, 1200. Huh. Wait, have these been... They have been doing things. Hooray. Cool, cool, cool. We're not as far off getting Bio 3. Some actual science as I thought. How's our stone been doing? 
Still bottlenecked on that. Oh no. What happened here? Oh no. Are you kidding me? This is my fault though. This this one's my fault. Let's just remove those two signals and holy crap that's dangerous. That should sort itself out. So basically from here up to here is one sector. Yes, indeed. I wish we could set up signals that, like, gave priority right of way to... R really? Really? What? What? If we do... Huh? What, what are you doing? How did you think you could get through there? What is happening with our train pathing? Is it because I removed those signals while they were already... Please, not again. Oh, no. Why don't you let him out? Kodiak, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, I... I think this is working, but I need to keep checking on it for a couple of minutes. LTN said it was a lost train, hence stacked up. I've set LTN's terrible, no good, horrible, bad, lost train mechanic to the maximum. Uh, where is it? Delivery timeout, 36,000 seconds. As opposed to 10 minutes. So 600 minutes. 10 hours. Yeah, uh, the stream is not 10 hours long, so we know that's not what happened. Unfortunately, it won't, it won't let me set that to infinite. Um, that's actually the arbitrary maximum that that can go to. Okay. Uh, anyway, I think I'm going to have to finish up. I'm already over time. If I do add a timer before... Like, I could make both of these. We're already doing it, though. These two have to be... No, 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 no. Okay. What we're already doing is saying all four of these have to be true before the countdown starts for the launch. But I'm thinking if we say... There's a countdown before we acknowledge that these two are correct. Especially this one. Then we won't report that the ship is ready. Uh, it'll, it'll be harder to report that the ship is ready, and hopefully that'll mean it's actually been emptied before we report ship is ready, and then make it impossible to cause that problem again. Uh, it still doesn't make any sense to me that the ship is launching without a destination. Like, with the problems that we can see, what should happen... Theoretically, sometimes, maybe, is the ship launches almost empty on core fragments, kidnaps a few bots, and goes to an outpost and comes back with core fragments. Unfortunately, it might come back with a mix of core fragments, so in a sense, I'm glad that's not happening. But, oh, we haven't, oh yeah, yeah, I forgot, we're doing, we're updating this outpost. I might do that off stream as well. Update all the old ones. Um, but yeah. We'll try it. I'll add timers to these. So that these two conditions have to be true. 
at the same time for multiple, for like at least a solid second before we report that the ship is ready for launch. And see if that somehow covers it. Alright, who are we going to raid today? All that stone, indeed. Oh, let me just double check as well. Are these guys... How? How do we have these two signals here, and this guy's trying to pass in here? I think it's got to be something to do with that I removed these two while they were already passing. Probably. But I would think they would just... I'm, I'm pretty sure whenever you even mark a signal for deconstruction, every single train in the game repaths. So that shouldn't really be an explanation. Is this guy finally going to leave? Yes, fantastic. Looks like that's working now. We hope. All right, let's give it a save. Who is playing Factorio? I don't see any S... Uh, we raided Mr. Dane yesterday, so... Functionally, I don't see any SEK2. Um... Speedrun? Why not speedrun? Alright. Holy crap, we're still saving. Thank you all for watching, do take care, and I'll see you next time. Check out the Discord of Blueprints if you're into that, if you have any questions or anything, by all means. And till next time, stay safe. Take care, Sergeant, uh, Sergeant Dog, thanks for hanging out. And everyone else as well. See you next time, guys. Take care, Fatboy. Evil Pla. Wee 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 wee. ITX. Thanks so much for the rates.